meeting to order at uh, 7.04 p.m. meeting of the Montpelier Roxbury uh, Public Schools uh, Board of School Directors. Um, the first item, we'll get it out of the way, it'll be very short, is public comment. Um, okay, no public comment. So uh, tonight I'm very uh, pleased to have uh, Mike DeWeese here, uh, former superintendent who I believe worked with Grant previously um, and is now working with the Vermont School Boards Association to help uh, school districts do what we need to do, which is find a superintendent. Um, so I think what we'll first do is we'll just uh, do some quick intros. I can also tell you who's not here. Um, and then you can introduce yourself uh, Mike, and then I think we're going to largely turn it over to you for Q&A and to get us through uh, the search process. Uh, I also do, and I think an order of action related to this is um, I have talked to CQ Strategies over the last couple days. Uh, and you're going to explain <coughs> who CQ Strategies I'm, I'm are? I'm to explain who CQ okay. Strategies yes. are. Uh, CQ Strategies has worked with the school district and other school districts on uh, cultural competency and diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion issues. Um, I've explained our situation to them that we have a tight time frame to find a superintendent, but uh, that uh, cultural competency, casting a wide net, getting a diverse pool of applicants, uh, and making sure that uh, we find a leader who's also going to uh, advance the district's already, I think, very admirable work, uh, but very complete work uh, in that field was a high priority uh, both for the board and for the administration, and I think the staff, and, and certainly the community as a whole, um, and asked them if they could help us with the tight time frame to uh, give us suggestions to do as much as we could do uh, in, that, in that time frame. Uh, and they are excited that uh, we're talking to them and excited to help. Uh, and uh, they're going to give us a draft plan of some ideas on Monday. Uh, and they're willing to do some contracting throughout the process and explain to them the time frame we're on. So it would be good to have a motion just authorizing me to, to work with them and to, to work on a contract uh, with them for services. I'll have an estimate that I can bring back. Um, if you want to give me a range, I don't think it's going to be terribly much, but I mean, they will want to get paid. So, um, so that's that's a, a quick item of business that we can either deal with now or we can deal with later. How about if I make a motion that you work with them to to develop a contract which you would bring to us at the next board meeting? Sounds good. Does that sound reasonable? The the only question is, do we want to have them start doing work? Or May second, and we're going to. Oh, I would like yeah, to amend that yeah. contract. Uh, okay, okay. That so I take that motion back. I'll make another motion. Let's see. I make a motion that you just work with them and be reasonable. Grant doesn't want to you spending any more money. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I was going to suggest that we. Um, Give you the ability to work up to a cost of ten thousand without having to come back to the board for separate approval, something like that. Why don't I make a motion that you work with CQ Strategies up to a cost of ten thousand to assist us in superintendent recruitment? Do I have a second? I'll second it. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So now we'll go with the introductions. Mike and I have talked on the phone and uh, emailed, but I'm Jim Murphy. I'm the chair of the board. Uh, in my real job, uh, I'm an attorney uh, and environmental advocate with National Wildlife Federation. I work largely on climate and energy issues, and I've been on the board. Well, I've been on this board since it was formed uh, in October, and I'm, I'm also on the Montpelier Public Schools Board. I've been on that board since uh, a couple of years now. Go this way. So I'm Lisa Frost and um, Roxbury resident. So I've been on the board since we organized in October, and um, I I do a, quite a few things. 
things for work, so uh, I'll save that for another time, but um, I'm pretty passionate about education in general. So. Thank you. And I'm Becky Boa, and I was elected March 17 to the Montpelier Board and transitioned into this board. Um, my children have come up through the Montpelier school systems, and I'm the Human Resources Director up at Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice. Thank you. Oh, sorry, so we'll take a minute. I'm Ryan Sajak. I'm also a Roxbury community member. I've been on the Roxbury board since 2013. Um, went through the merger process, and I'm in here now with the new board and moving forward. Great. Hi, Mike. I know Mike from a past life, and uh, I'm retired now and uh, have been on the Montpelier board and now and was on the merger committee and now I'm on the um, Rock, Montpelier Roxbury board. Um, my name is Peter Sterling. This is my third year of service on the Montpelier School Board. Uh, around 2000, and 2000, I also served on the Doty School Board up in Worcester at K through 6, sure. small school with 68 kids. And, um, and then in my professional life, I'm the chief of staff to the president and pro tem of the Senate. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, and the three people who are not able to make it because of, uh, I think all because of their, except for Michelle, traveling for spring break is uh, Bridget AC, who's our vice chair, uh, Michelle Braun, who is currently the chair of the Bob Pillier School Board, although she uh, was smart enough to kick that to me for this board, and, uh, and uh, Steve Hinchin, who uh, I believe is in New Mexico. Thank you. Go, go. go, go at it. Yours. Yours. Thank you much. I appreciate the brief introduction, Mike DeWeese. Been in Vermont since 77. Uh, my entire education career has been here in the state. I uh, retired in 2013 after 36 years of service. 24 of those years was as a superintendent or assistant superintendent in two districts, Franklin Northeast, uh, based out of Richford, and uh, at the time, the former Chittenden Central District, based out of Essex Junction, and uh, that's where Grant and I have uh, some wonderful, warm memories of, uh, of good years working together. I've done different bodies of work in retirement, um, all elective, all by choice, um, and it is rewarding for me to choose projects or decline projects based on whether or not I think I can be helpful and useful to, to the organization. My work is mostly in service to school boards and superintendents, so I work with both uh, the VSA and your VSBA. And uh, I have done other administrative searches in the past. This is the first time I've done it through VSBA, so Nicole Mason and I certainly have a, a close relationship, and uh, I have the official official binder, the official set of guidelines here to, to work from. So I think of the binder as perhaps being the, uh, the science of the search, and hopefully I'm going to bring a bit of the art and uh, um, flexibility and, and dynamics to it. So that's my, my role. What I'd love to do is just uh, talk with you tonight uh, about a few things, but then really work with you tonight on making some decisions. Because as you can appreciate, um, you're about to embark on a really important decision point. I think it's especially timely for you based on the official transition of your uh, consolidated district starting up on July 1st. So there's just rich opportunity for you to be thinking about uh, starting officially, uh, moving from your transition board status to your official board status on July 1st, as well as perhaps having a new uh, chief executive uh, slash superintendent working with you at that point in time. Uh, it is not, uh, we have not found it to be statewide or nationally, quite frankly, uh, an easy task to, to land and secure superintendents. Uh, pools tend to be small, and that's just the way it is. Uh, we have not seen the depth of, of, of numbers, at least, in pools uh, like we did even perhaps two decades ago. So the times are changing a bit, and that's just a reality of, of, of what school boards face these days in terms of going into the marketplace looking for superintendents. Your situation is compounded, as you realize, by where we find ourselves. It's April 19th. It's just a little later in the game than, than is often the case. But I don't necessarily feel it's too late in the game. I think there's still a window of time here. But that window of time is going to require a sense of, of decision making. And I would urge you tonight to really um, think about the timeline and timetable. And I will be detailing that more for you in terms of what that looks like, how things unfold, and what that relationship looks like. I am not your headhunter. Uh, I am not picking your next superintendent. That is not my role. Uh, my role is to help shepherd the process. 
and you will have me working most directly with a screening committee uh, that you will name, that you will appoint. And, and that will be a group that will really run through the first level of vetting in terms of looking after the applications, uh, looking at uh, folks through an interview uh, procedure, and then recommending back to you some finalists for you then to consider. So on the front end, you'll be charging that committee. You'll be giving that committee some direction and guidance. You'll really inform that committee about what you're looking for. You will impart from your board staff that committee. So hopefully there'll be a couple of you that'll actually move from this board onto that screening committee as part of the process. Uh, and I think of this in a bit like a reverse engineering process. And that is we know when you want your new superintendent in place, and that is July 1st. That would be the ideal is to have your new person uh, have him or her start on July 1st. That backs the whole timeline back up again in terms of what that then means. Um, if he or she is currently in a position elsewhere, he or she is going to need time to transition from their current position to, to a new position here. You recognize you've got uh, your high school graduation at the end of the second week of June, uh, and that's probably a logical window to think about trying to wind things down, wrap things up. So. For you to be thinking toward potential uh, appointment with a successful search in that second week-ish or so of June, that would be the, the, the end game of what this process could look like. That's going to require an expedited process. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to mean we're going to keep things moving in order to make that happen. And again, I'll be happy to, to lay that out with you in terms of what a, a recommended timeline can look like. So tonight, um, I'd like to spend some time with you talking about more of the details and nuances of the search process. I'd like to talk with you about the roles, your role, my role, the role of the screening committee. I'd like to have you uh, identify uh, a salary range that you would publish as uh, part of your advertising recruitment materials to inform potential candidates of, of what the salary range could be. I've got some recommendations on that. The heavy bit of business tonight is going to be to approve vacancy notice, and, and that's really content-rich, content-deep. And it's uh, fundamentally your assertions of, of what sort of qualities um, you want to represent the district as, as possessing, as, uh, as an attraction for candidates, as well as what the qualities of your successful candidate uh, will hold as he or she comes uh, to, to, the, to the conversation. We'd like you to um, define a couple of essay questions. And the essay questions are questions that would accompany the application itself. So you get a chance to actually see some, some thinking in that sense. You get a chance to see some writing styles in that sense. You get a chance to uh, appreciate uh, the responses to a couple of key questions that you think might be really pertinent uh, for folks to respond to through the application process. You'll help me define tonight um, the breadth and scope of advertising. Uh, I'll have some thoughts on that as well. But uh, I, I can give you some, some ins and outs around that. We'll want to talk about your um, search process budget. And uh, I, I hear Grant over my right shoulder saying, yes, we want to be sure we've got that down. We definitely mm -hmm. want to have good knowledge up front about what sort of the anticipated cost could be and to, to have you uh, affirm that in the front end. Um, should we go over that budget, we're going to want to have a process for you to uh, be able to assemble and to uh, be able to approve thereafter future expenditures, which may go over the budget, which I don't anticipate. but. I heard earlier, certainly an action point, that there may be other budget considerations that I hadn't really brought to the table tonight. So we'll want to figure out a way to fold those, those sort of costs in. Um, the screening committee is really owed a charge, a specific charge. They know what it is they're supposed to do, how it is they're supposed to do business on your behalf, what it is that uh, they'll be doing and how they'll be doing it. Uh, and, and that'll be a written charge that we'd like you to, to approve tonight. As well as um, your defining the membership of that committee. And the membership of that committee would be defined two ways. One, by the total number of seats on that committee. And second, how to divvy those seats up. What sort of constituency groups are going to be represented through the screening committee process. And I will not recommend that you uh, do any more tonight than a couple of things around that. One, I would hope that you can set the charge tonight for that committee. I would hope that you could set the number, total number of seats in that committee. I would hope that you could figure out tonight with me how to divide up those number of seats among the constituency groups, but it's premature tonight, I think, for you to actually name names. I think that you want to think about a process through which you can solicit interest around that. Uh, the last thing you want to do tonight is name names of folks who may not want to be there. You don't want to leave out folks who might be really valuable to the process. Um, 
and I think that's a conversation point for this board after I leave tonight and after you leave tonight to think about how you want to tackle that task. And that doesn't have to be done by the weekend. Like I'm going to encourage some of these things do need to be done by the weekend, but that's one of those things that actually could wait a little bit. Um, as well as adopting the, the search process calendar. So the calendar really will be the driver in this, in this conversation. And uh, I'll have some thoughts about the calendar as well. So that's like a fun night. Mm -hmm. Good time said by all about ready to, to jump it's in. It's okay. Uh, any questions on, on where I think we might take this meeting and what sort of things we all want to be tackling? Good so far? Good so far. Nobody has grabbed their car keys yet. That's a good sign. I, I, I like that. What I want to start with um, is a, um, thanks, Greg. That's great. Thanks. I do. Thank you. This first handout is um, an overview of both the roles of the various parties in the process, as well as um, a high order sequence of, of, of what the responsibilities would be among those parties. So as I mentioned, uh, you're in charge. You're, you're driving this bus. You should drive this bus. It's your job by law to drive this bus. Uh, you're in charge of, of the decision uh, about owning the process as well as the decision point at, at the end. Think of me as your guide on the side. Uh, I'll be working with you at times. I'll be working with your screening committee at times. So I'll be the one most connected to the various elements and aspects of the process. And that's really my job is to help just shepherd the process along as you prescribed it. Then the screening committee is a formal committee of the board. And I'm sure you've got other committees that you work with now that you charge as, as part of your, your district's work, or perhaps that'll be work that you're coming up on. But this would be a defined formal committee. It'll be representative of, of various stakeholders. Uh, and their job is to satisfy the charge that you're going to lay out for them. They're going to do the job that you ask them to do fundamentally. And their job is not to decide on who they like best. That's not their job. Their job is not to vote on their favorite candidate. That is not their job. The job of the committee is to figure out through criteria that you've laid out which candidates best match that criteria. They're going to do it through a paper screen of the applications. They're going to do it through selecting some of those folks for first round interview. They're going to undertake those interviews. They'll do reference checks on those folks. And from all of that information, their job would then be to remand to the board hopefully up to three finalists for you to consider. So that's the objective, is for them to take the body of, of applicants and from that body get in their mind, through your charge, through the expectations you've outlined, the three best they think would fit your, your charge. They're not going to rank them. They're not going to say, here's our number one, here's our two, here's our three. It's here are the three. Here's what we can tell you about the three. Here's what we think the collective best three are. And then it'll be your turn to then receive those three and to then go through the process of, of making some decisions. So the board's job is to identify the desired qualities of the next superintendent. And I'll have some, some draft thoughts for you to just react to tonight. Again, you're going to set the charge for the screening committee. You're going to identify the budget tonight. And at some point in the near future, you're going to name members to the screening committee itself as well. So uh, school's on vacation this week, is that right? True. Sure. Yes. OK, so clearly. Next week at the earliest is when you probably want to start to get after, you know, your promotion of, of this opportunity. Again, the screening committee is going to paper screen all the applicants. They're going to uh, select some semifinalists to be interviewed by them. Um, and following the reference checks and evaluation of those semifinalists, they're going to get to you a, a list of, of ideally three folks for you to consider. And three is ideal. Three is probably enough for you to manage. Um, and hopefully we can have up to three. I mean, that would be, that'd be, that'd be great. Then it comes back to the board again. Okay? So the screening committee's been doing its work. You now receive these three finalists. Um, your job is then to organize the big day. And the big day, uh, typically, for finalists means come in for a visit to your district, uh, get a chance to visit your schools, get a chance to talk to uh, personnel, uh, making themselves available for a public forum so that parents and citizens can come out and say hi and meet them and just hear a few things. And, maybe even give you a little feedback uh, around their impressions of those folks. Um, we probably ought to feed and water those folks. That'd probably be a good idea if we did that, because it's going to be a full day for them. And then uh, they'd be interviewed by you, likely in the evening, uh, one by one by one, so you'd see all three in the same evening, and that would be a perfect schedule for that 
that day. And once you've interviewed all three, uh, you then deliberate over what you've seen. Uh, if you think you need to further vet one, two, or three of them, you would do that. If you think you're ready to make a decision, then, then you make a decision. But again, I'd be working with you at that step of the process as well. Um, and clearly there's work afterwards too. I mean, as you know, there's always future work for a school board. But after you've hired your superintendent, um, there's other decision points. I mean, part of the hiring process certainly is the contract details with that superintendent. Uh, part of it is to affirm that superintendent's entry plan. And I'm a big fan of formalizing the entry plan so that the incoming superintendent clearly understands uh, his or her ex expectations of him or her. Um, they understand expectations of you as well. And it sort of becomes a compact of, of what that entry relationship is between the superintendent and board to really get things off on that perfect right step. And in the most ideal of worlds, um, that then leads itself directly into the evaluation of that superintendent uh, in his or her first year in terms of the delivery and execution and performance of that entry plan. So um, he or she will have notions of how they want to start. You'll have notions of how you think he or she maybe ought to start and what some of the low-hanging fruit is, what some of the stretches might be, what some of the initiatives and priorities could be, and those are sort of things that get married and in, in, embedded into an entry plan. So that's work that would occur after all this. Uh, and then VSBA does offer uh, some joint training uh, to really uh, hit the ground running again so that uh, the, the board and superintendent relationship is off to the very best start it can be. And that's a shared training that comes at no charge to you through your membership uh, with VSBA. So those are sort of down the road things after the fact, but we need to get there first. That's our job is to get there first. Um, so does the process at the higher order here make some sense, Becky? The process makes sense. I just have some housekeeping questions Absolutely. after you. Um, how effective do you think it is to go beyond just doing a Vermont or, or Northern New England search? Is that an effective should we, if we decide to do that, should, is that something we need to do from the get-go? Do we want to go outside of the area or? Yeah, here are my thoughts on that. My thoughts Please. are that the required process through a VSBA search means a, a defined application approach. Yes. And the defined application approach is called School Spring. Mm -hmm. It's an electronic that platform means. by which mm -hmm. folks submit their applications electronically. It enables uh, the state, the screening committee and the board to review things electronically of, of these candidates' uh, uh, submittals. And um, the cost for doing school spring is the same cost whether you're thinking locally or nationally. So it, it is, is a national platform, okay. as it sounds like you're familiar with. And, and because of that, um, we've been finding that that is the single best way to draw a candidate pool is through school spring. Now, there are other national opportunities as well, mm -hmm. uh, many of them at no cost to you. Many of them come by way of uh, the National School Board Association, um, through the Association, American Association of School Administrators, uh, in which they have um, uh, classified ads of sorts, typically online, that uh, typically come without cost. So there are ways otherwise to get the word out beyond the state. I, I don't see a good reason to narrow your search to an in-state search only. I think no, that no, you're going to cast a net, we might as well cast the net. And um, you can structure your mission and vision statement within the search Yes. documentation to encourage people to apply that might not otherwise be just within Vermont. So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, precisely right. And mm -hmm. certainly in state, we've got other vehicles, other means of, of communication to sort of get the word out as well. Sure. Um, there are other networks certainly in state within the region that we, we tap into. Um, so that would be um, sort of taking care of both needs, both the in state as well as national need through the use of school spring. That's going to cost you about, Grant, don't quote me, $350 to do That's that. It. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, $350 will get you about one line, one column inch in the Boston Globe. Does that sound about right for, for an ad? Is that pretty close? <laughs> we'll get you far in the Boston Globe, no, that, kind of, that kind of money. Not. But it's, yeah, it, you can certainly do New York Times. You can do Boston Globe. You can spend the big bucks if you choose to with their classified ads. Um, we just haven't seen a return on investment with that. We just haven't seen that to be a really smart way of trying to, you know, get the pool broadened. Now, there may be other venues through your uh, other consultancy that you're considering that there might be other uh, pipelines, other venues, other avenues, other, other approaches, other connections, other networks and so forth that we could also expand it to. I, I, 
uh, I'm anxious to learn more about that myself. So mm -hmm. that'll be interesting. But Becky, my advice to you would not be to just think, not to close out any options, I guess I is what agree. I'm saying. We might as yeah. well guess the widest net no. possible. Already yeah. there. <laughs> Good, okay. Already there, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and there are a number of successful Vermont superintendents who have come here from out of state. I mean, yes. they just are. It's, it's a unique state. The laws are specific to Vermont. Um, the culture is specific to Vermont. But it's not unlearnable. It's, it's absolutely achievable and doable, and it's not uh, unheard of for uh, out-of-state candidates to, to be successful with in-state positions. So, so that ought not be something to, to worry about at this stage. I think we've my had enough. Hope for you, <laughs> my hope for you we'll have good candidates, I hope. Is, is to really get as, as, as broad a pool as we can yes. with hopefully some depth in that pool as, as well. So breadth and depth of a pool would be just the perfect match for, for a search. And, absolutely. Uh, I'm sorry. I said absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. And I'm sorry, another housekeeping. <laughs> no, the fire away is good. Okay. It's helpful. So um, the, the, um, the behind the scenes work, the reference checking, the travel arrangements, the bringing people on site and all of that, who does the, who does that? I only ask because, you know, the people that work within the district office already have full time jobs and, and this is going to take a lot of hands on work to, to conduct these background checks and to do a very thorough reference checking on it. Is that something that we should look outside of the district office or how does that work? I, I've begun a conversation with Tracy and Heather mm -hmm. and, and okay. Grant, um, and uh, my purpose in those conversations was to learn your landscape a little bit, okay. to see um, what level of support exists within your central office, to see what the um, expertise is. Typically, central offices have somebody who plays point with School Spring, and you do. Her, her name is Heather. Okay. And um, Heather's ready to talk with me about work hopefully that we accomplished tonight, uh, ready to put that into motion, ready to get that school spring ad posted. Okay. Um, and once she does that, I'll need one other favor from Heather, and that is to give the keys of, to school spring to the members of the screening committee once they're named by you. Yes. And at that point, Heather's pretty much hands off of the school spring responsibility. That becomes then your job and the screening committee, the screening committee's job first, your job second to then make use of those materials. Okay. So that's one example. The screening committee, uh, I'm going to recommend within your charge that they be responsible for the primary reference checks. Yes. That that be part of what they do and that we give them adequate time uh, to do that as well within committee. So it's going to all going to be part of this timeline that I'll lay out for you tonight. Um, the copies you're holding right now are compliments of work that, that Tracy took care of for me today. So mm -hmm. I think there are ways for us to, to figure this out. And uh, my I've worked in a central, I've worked in a couple of central offices. I understand exactly what you're asking mm -hmm. about. The concern and interest you have about not overburdening folks that's my interest as well okay um, the the volunteer work of your screening committee that's heavy lifting mm -hmm. those are folks who are going to want to be at every meeting those are folks who are going to want to be ready to do their homework offline uh, those are folks who want to be committed to to this interest um, so I know you'll be intentional and thoughtful about who it is you name eventually name to the committee but those are the folks that will be doing a lot of the the work yeah. In terms of the uh, looking down the road, maybe you're thinking about that as well, Becky, like the, uh, the final day, the site visit day, and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, often that's a divided responsibility. Uh, typically, uh, often a principal will sort of play point with one of the candidates, another principal with another candidate, right. and just sort of be their shepherd for the day. Um, set up the schedule. Uh, certainly, I'll be communicating, I'll be the one communicating with correspondence and so forth with the applicants and the semifinalists and the finalists, I and mean, that's all work I'll do on your behalf. Um, so that won't fall to you, that won't fall to your central office, that'll be work that, that I'll be just tending to, that's part of what you're paying for me to do, frankly. And last but not least, community involvement in yes. the screening process or in the, or at, what, at what point do you see community involvement? Is it from the very beginning or at the final interview? Where do you see that coming in? I, I, I see it as mission critical, I see it as essential. Um, I also see it with respect to um, limitations of the timeline. Mm -hmm. So places where I see community slash parent involvement would be uh, with membership on the screening committee, mm -hmm. with um, well-informed uh, opportunities to meet the finalists and to have a chance to visit with them, to have a chance to provide you with some their feedback about them. Um, 
and, 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 and those are some key opportunities, I would think, for, for folks. Okay. Good. Jim. Thank you. Yep. Hi. Hi. Um, <clears throat> we use a policy governance model here on this board. How critical is it, do you think, we hire someone who's got experience with policy government? Uh, hold on. We actually haven't formally adopted. This board has not formally adopted policy governance. And I don't okay. think we are going to formally adopt it. I think we're going to do a governance by policy model. That's going to oh. this okay. Never mind. <laughs> <All good. laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. You know, you're right. um, it, it doesn't uh, say here, which doesn't mean it's not being done, either the screening committee or the board, um, how often does somebody from this district go to the other person's district for an interview? In other words, for a visit at their district. Oh, uh, where so they are now, for yeah. example. Yeah. In um, a process where you've got months and months and months of time, you can go visit as often as you want to. We'll look at the calendar tonight and see how feasible that might be. Um, it, it, it may be possible. It may not be practical. It's one of those sort of conversations. Well, and it depends on where they are. It depends on where they yeah. are and what you need to know and what you need to hear um, and, and, uh, and what the best ways to get that information. But not impossible. Not impossible. No, never. nothing's impossible. Nothing. Nothing. Thank you. Nothing's impossible. That's right. Right? Just so general question. Sure. So this is my first superintendent search. Congratulations. And you know, you're your stripes on this. Keep getting told that no, this is such, that's so different, it's so different. You guys are in a unique, unique position right now. And not having gone through this before, yep. how is it that unique? I don't have a personal comparison. So can you give me kind of like the ideal world? Like if we were doing a superintendent search in the ideal world, you know, what would the time frame be in terms of when we were applying? Like how is it going to be that different? I mean, obviously we have yep. a tight timeline, there's no denying that. Yep. But overall, like what are the big things that are going to be unique and challenging for us to address? It is, um, when I talk about the audience of administrators in general, as I start my answer, thinking principals, thinking central office folks, thinking already sitting superintendents elsewhere, those folks at this date would already be under contract if they're working next year already somewhere. Um, searches ideally would start middle to late winter and that would capture that window before they're perhaps coming back under contract or could be released easily from contract. Um, so we're a few months behind what I consider to be the ideal, ideal window. Um, that's part of the answer. I'm not sure I'm fully answering your question. Just nudge me again. With I mean, is it really the time frame that is our biggest challenge? I mean, are we really no, no. Your, your biggest challenge is the pool in general of superintendent candidates. That is the challenge that so you that and every is. other board faces. Okay. Yours is just the wrinkle you've got is is the timeline. And and you know we might as well talk straight up that um, this may not yield a satisfactory result. Right. You may not be okay with where this ends uh, in June. And, and and if that's the case, you might have a sense of that before then. And if not, you'll be making decisions in June about what that all means. Um, it's you know, not the worst thing ever to uh, think about other opportunities, whether it be short-term interim, longer-term interims. Uh, you know, that's 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 a fallback position. Uh, I certainly don't advise you to start there. I, I think that's potential opportunity lost by starting there. So, uh, so there's that. Um, I'm aware of another district um, in the state this year, in which I believe. Three individuals sat aside the board's interest. One by one were offered the job, and one by one turned it down. Mm -hmm. That's painful. So there's that, um, <laughs> which is why we want to be um, as earnest and as straightforward and, and, and honest about representing who you are, what you want, what you're looking for, and, and what a match would look like. Um, this is a marriage of sorts that you're talking about. I mean, nature of the board superintendent relationship, um, again, from a superintendent bias, I've never done what you've done, I've never sat on the school board, but I have sat in the superintendent's chair for more than a little bit. Uh, it is absolutely mission critical that that be a strong, solid relationship for the health and well-being of the district. And that that's responsibility of both parties, but it's all about the match. And uh, I'll give you my little, my little spiel, I guess. Can I, can I keep talking? Is it okay if I'm doing it? Go for it. As you're getting to know I'm a talker, I guess. The, well, this is very helpful. 
there, there's an old body of research that is as ancient as a day is long that it talks about person environment fit. And the whole research is about skilled people can be very successful in some environments, and that same person can fail in a different environment. And it's all about matching that person with that particular environment. And is there a, is there a dovetail of skills and experiences and opportunities and relationship and all those sort of good things? There are sitting superintendents um, that may be interested in this position. And, and I would not offhand discount their candidacy. It, it may simply be that matter of person environment fit, and this may look to them to be a better fit than perhaps where they are now. So I wouldn't discard that as a, a potential sub-audience of, of your candidate pool. I would encourage you to be open to, to those potential candidates. Um, I also direct the Vermont Superintendent's Leadership Academy, and it's in its fifth year right now, and that's an academy where we uh, invite aspiring superintendents into a year-long academy, and we expose them, introduce them to the world of the superintendency. And what we've found now in our fifth year with the academy is that it has become something of a pipeline for the superintendent uh, feeder system, if you will, that a whole bunch of those folks who have been through the program have continue to aspire to a superintendency and have actually landed in in-state superintendency. So that has become uh, another venue, if you will, through which folks are, are, are approaching the superintendency. And what's kind of nice about that is they get a chance for a year to meet superintendents, talk about superintendents, think like superintendents, experience superintendencies, and, and decide whether or not they're really in the game or not. The last thing you want is to hire a rookie superintendent and find out that's really in the game for them after a month or two in the job. That's, that's, that's a lose-lose situation for everybody. So. Anyway, that pipeline does exist, and I'm hopeful that we can e exploit you know, that opportunity as well to think about first-timers that, that might, be, might be applicable to, to your situation as well. That was actually my question, is how, how is the evaluation process different for someone who's coming into the superintendent experience versus someone who you know, maybe is a principal or a curriculum director or assistant superintendent, and this is their next step? Are there different things we should, I, mean, I assume there are different things we should be looking for, but what are those different things? Are you referring to the evaluation of their candidacy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, clearly they need to come in talking superintendent speak, whether they've done it or not. I mean, you, you need to have confidence that they are indeed ready to, to assume this level of, of, of their career evolution. Um, so I would not necessarily modify the questions that you might ask of them, but yep. you're going to have to appreciate the experience differences that perhaps they bring to the table. I mean, it's... It's no different in any sort of industry as you're looking at experienced folks or inexperienced folks to that industry. So it's, it's a niche of the industry. Uh, there's no job quite like the superintendency. And uh, um, the principalship isn't the superintendency, but a whole lot of superintendents have been principals. I mean, it's, it's a very natural pathway for career growth. Lisa, how are we doing? I'm good. You've been question free so far. I just I want to make sure you're okay I'm here. I'm looking at your list here. And <laughs> <laughs> I have more lists. There'll be more lists coming. Okay, to move on? Yep. Yes. All right. Please. What I think we need to establish next is um, how you want to advertise, thank you, Grant, for your um, salary range. And I've compiled some data for you on um, superintendent salaries. And if you're want to cheat, you can go down to the bottom of the page, you can see the, the bottom of my recommendation. But going through the chart, these are all current year data. And as we look at all superintendents across the state, there are 60 of them that were surveyed. The average salary this year for those superintendents is 124.7. And the asterisk refers to, that's inclusive of the Montpelier School District superintendent salary. So that's in there as well, in that average. The average years uh, in position, uh, in that position, current position for all Vermont superintendents is a little over four. The average total years that person's been a superintendent is a little over five. So that's the mix that statewide you find superintendents in right now. Now you can shred that in two different ways and shred that into two kinds of districts. One's a supervisory union district, one's a supervisory district. Yours has been a supervisory district in Montpelier. Yours has been a supervisory union in Roxbury. Uh, you are becoming a supervisory district on July 1st. So we've got that technicality down. So this next one, perhaps, is more relevant to that audience of districts, if you will. So the Vermont Supervisory Districts, there are 18 of those this year. Average salary there is $128,000. Uh, a little higher average years in position, 4.83, and a little higher years of uh, total superintendency at 
And then you look at the uh, supervisor union folks, a, a bit lower there at 121, uh, again, uh, an N of 37. A little fewer years of experience, a whole lot more years of, of total years of, of experience. I guess when the SUs find superintendents they like, they want to keep them, I guess. But my recommendation to you, based on those data, is that you set a $10,000 range from a low of 120000 to a high of 130000 and that you think about that range uh, a couple of ways. You think about that range based on qualifications. You think about that range based on experience, and that uh, those are reasonable uh, attributes to, to attach to a salary range for applicants thinking about whether this job fits their needs. That's exclusive of your benefits package oh. that you traditionally offer. Yeah. So that would be salary only. Very generous. Becky. You know, I'm going to ask this question. Um, yeah. Is it too tight and is it too low? Well, you've got a budget for next year. We I see, do. I see grand. <laughs> I know. I, for, for what so. it is that we want to attract and knowing that, you know, so I'm asking. Will it limit yeah. potential yeah. candidates? I, I, I will tell you that that's, in my mind, low average. It is. Not below average, but low average. So it's, it's average, just maybe a little low average. It doesn't, it doesn't preclude uh, somebody coming that, for some reason, we think um, has experience or something of being at the upper end of that or even over. But is that it's candidate going to apply with this limitation? I don't, to be limitation honest, in this, in this superintendency, I don't think that money is going to be exactly the top thing. Mm. But if they're relocating with a family, it will be. Maybe. People don't come to Vermont for the money. Well, that individual coming in at a salary of low of 120 is right in the ballpark of where SU superintendents are this year on average. That person comes in at 130. They're very close to the average for SD superintendents. So I, I think it's legitimate. I don't think it's unreasonable. Um, Perhaps relocation is carved out as a separate benefit or something. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a conversation point. And, mm -hmm. and Becky, maybe a way to couch that as you represent the position is to say anticipated salary range of 120 yeah. 130. Perhaps that's a signal that okay. there's a way to, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. 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 you might be a little flexible about that. Peter? What, what would be the disadvantage of just advertising it as 120 to 160 this way? I mean, we don't have to pay anything. Right. I mean, true. If there was a fantastic candidate who was meeting all of our dreams and could solve all our problems, you know, for this kind of district, we have money. And if for the dream candidate, we could pay more. I mean, we'd have to meet the criteria. I'm just saying, I don't know what the downside of advertising that there's a bigger range. We don't have to pay. I think to 140. Or 140 or 140. I mean, pick a number that would attract someone who's truly exceptional. Because really, in, a, in my mind, in a $23 million budget, whether you pay someone, you know, 130 or 140, to get the right person would mean the world to us. To get a, a really great candidate, so why not advertise it and have and have more people coming in by having a bigger range, and then you know winnow it down from there. I like the word anticipated in front of the range you've given. Uh, I don't think it will limit the number of people we get. Yeah, but what's the downside you know, of putting I, a bigger number? I actually, number? in my experience, have to respectfully disagree. I know when we're recruiting, we're, we we. People do look at the upper limit and yeah. see it as the maximum in their heads. Okay, for five years, I'm going to be under this max, yeah. whether that's legit or not. And if they're moving with a family, I'm just, I don't see that there's harm done in popping that 130 up to 140 or even a little bit higher. My reaction to it um, is sort of the Lake Wolbegon effect, <laughs> um, and the candidates tend not to look at the low number, they tend to look at the high number because mm -hmm. they know they're exceptional, they know they're special, they know they're above average, and uh, therefore might expect that higher number. And it, it can make negotiation over final contract salary just a little more awkward for the board, uh, if not sometimes impossible for the board based on expectations on the front end. So I don't like know. That's not to How would it obligate That's Well, it might also signal to it. It sets an expectation. That, yeah. yeah. It might say to a candidate that, like, wow, we put the 160 out there for the star candidate, and you're not it, which is why we're offering you 126. No, you're right. No, there is that. Uh, yeah. okay. That's what I mean yeah. about if, if somebody has outstanding qualifications for some reason, then you could up your 130 
but this way, you're in the range, and I think it's a reasonable range. Okay. I mean, I have a question about the range. How, um, Chittenden County is a different animal. Mm. How much does it skew? Uh, is, is, this, is 120 to 130 different if you kind of take Chittenden County out of the equation rather than, you know, putting it in the equation? Is this, is 120 to 130 like that's great for us out of Chittenden County or is that still, um, Essex Westford, um, in my opinion, perhaps the most complex district in Chittenden County is paying this year 130. Okay. okay. Burlington this year is paying 154. Uh, Champlain Valley, whose superintendent has been there a long time, yes, yes. 173. Colchester, 136. Montpelier this year, 127. South Burlington, 159. So yes, Winooski, 138. Uh, Milton, 129. Springfield, Springfield 134. So those are the Chittenden County numbers, except for Springfield, which is not in Chittenden County. I mean, the, the other consideration with that is if we are, is if there is a superintendent who feels this district might be a better fit, but is already in the awkward position of having to get out of a contract and say they're making 137 and see this 130 number, they're going to say, am I going to get out of my awkward contract and take a pay cut? Well, certainly in your negotiation with an individual like that, you would at least meet their 137 if you want, yeah. because that's just the reality of but it. If, but, but if, if you put it in here as... If they don't get to the point apply. where they even apply... Right, if you don't you even don't get that person. Yeah. I know. So is there other wording, like, with room for negotiation? Because you said anticipated is one, but are there other ways of wording it where there it's seen as more flexible to candidates? Yeah. Please. Oh, please do, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, First off, if, if I'm applying and it just says 120 to 130, I would apply if I'm somewhere in that ballpark as mm -hmm. far as what I could afford. I would not take the job if it was offered to me for less than 130 because I know you can afford it because you said you could. Right. And to me, that would be my starting position. Mm -hmm. um, so I appreciate the anticipated language and I think that is probably enough gray language that people would understand that it might be a little less, it might be a little more. Um, I would urge you to stick with 10,000 and a range of 10,000 is enough. Otherwise, it just gets too in, in, you know, ambiguous. Um, I do want you to bear in mind, realize we had zero dollars budgeted for this. Yeah. Zero. So in that first year, um, you know, I, I get $23 million budget, but it's not $23 million. we have requirements and yeah. we have zero budget. It's already so spoken for. <laughs> if you were to change this at all, I would say maybe you could consider 125 to 135, which would put you, I think, where it, maybe it's not so much lower average, but mm -hmm. maybe it's more average than, but other than shifting it maybe 5,000, I would I would either go with this or shift it by 5,000, but I wouldn't change it other than that. Just get my two cents. Can, can we do something which I often see? Can we say competitive salary and benefit package commiserate with experience and leave it at that? Or is there an expectation that there's a salary range, a numerical salary range? I, I would say because you're casting a wide net that people might not know what that means in Vermont. Yeah. So if I'm in California and I see can you misery, well, I, I wouldn't know if that means 100,000 in Vermont or 200,000 in Vermont. But could but five I, seconds on Google give you at least an estimate? Yeah, yeah. I think it would Perhaps. be better to put in a number because um, out of state has exceedingly, what I said in the beginning, people don't come to Vermont for the money. Yeah. They're coming here, if they were a superintendent in Massachusetts, they're gonna come here probably with a pay cut. Mm -hmm. And, but they'd like to know the range of what that is. There's also a candidate pool, not just from Massachusetts, but elsewhere, 
yeah, that right. could be right. um, at a transition point in their career where they might be eligible for a pension in that state and ready to leave that state and continue to work elsewhere. And salary becomes a different conversation for those individuals. It's, it's, it's not necessarily 160 for them. It's enjoy your pension elsewhere and enjoy right. 125 here. You come to Vermont That's for true. various oh, reasons be besides great. the money. So we probably ought to figure out something to put in the, because that's yeah. going to be that well, to pull over this. <laughs> no, I like uh, the shifting of the five. 5 yeah, to go from 125 to 135. You like the fives? Yeah. Just kind of shifted. Let the minutes reflect. That's Becky's a fan of fives. Okay. Shifting. Shifting, that's right. <laughs> and including the anticipated. I like that as well. Yeah. Right. Adding the word anticipated. Oh, yes, adding it. Okay. Okay. Do you have to approve these? Tell you what, why don't you hold on to that for a second, and you can approve that with the whole next approval, which is okay. going to be your vacancy notice itself. Okay. Is that right? Thank you, sir. This is, this is great, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's why you're like come with your secretary. I'm This is a new job description. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get more steps today. <laughs> <laughs> So what we need is we need some standard uh, notice that can be used umpteen different ways. It can be used in school spring, can be used on AASA uh, job boards, can be used uh, something to pass out at state meetings, can be used through multiple purposes. So that is what this intends to do. Um, the look of this, other than the draft, uh, is pretty traditional in terms of how things look. The depth of it is pretty traditional. You already know there's an edit on the last paragraph of the last page, which will now say salary range anticipated, mm -hmm. 125, 135. Why don't you take a minute just to read through this on your own, and we'll, we'll talk about it in two minutes. I was actually thinking you could put a sentence in here about Vermont consistently being ranked one or two best places to live in the country or something like that. Becky, if you've got that language, I'll have to use it. Just put it right in there. Okay, I'll send that to you. Um, yeah. I should have brought my business cards. Do you have my email address? What is your email address? It actually says it on the bottom. Does there it? There is. Yeah, thank you. You're right. Does it? it? Okay. Yeah, Mike, I'll send that to you. So I, I now know you're hyphen free, so I can lose the hyphens. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that uh, paragraph about Montpelier uh, it was borrowed liberally from your municipal website. Sure. So um, yeah. it, was, yeah. it was well written. I just, just took it, quite frankly. Um, this has been informed a bit um, by, I think, your administrative team, so some of this has come from, from their input, uh, which I greatly appreciate. Um, but it's an important document, and, and, mm -hmm. and I want you to feel like you're at peace with it or good with it and edit it as you need to. So, okay. another example of where you're in charge. I think it sounds great. Yeah, I think it sounds great too. For the Roxbury folks, we talk a lot about Montpelier and have one line on Roxbury. Should we maybe add another line or two describing that community a little more? Wikipedia was a little light on Roxbury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not too surprising. <laughs> <laughs> We're a small rural community. There is. I'm not sure without what going say. In, right, without going into the cliches of small town life, you know, we're not going to say a lot more than what's already there. So I don't think it's totally necessary to. I don't feel like we're being diminished by any stretch by having less attention devoted to us word-wise, so. Um, I did, I kind of wondered what local faith and wisdom communities mean. A lot means. Under you, um, yeah. you know, like, sure, the first thing that comes to mind is like a Christian church, but was that something that you found? Right um, off the website, I, I, it caught my attention too. The Roxbury too, website? No, I'm sorry, my pillar website. Oh, it's on the Montpelier, Montpelier website. Municipal website. Mm -hmm. Yep, hmm. homepage. But we can we can lose that. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. just. This is your document. Personally, I don't know really about what the, the church has a very small congregation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Single In yeah. 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 Would faith communities do it? Would that? Uh, Even that, I think, might lose it. Lose the whole. Yeah. I, would, I would. I think Montpelier has a more active like faith community. 
But uh, that was in. I don't, well, oh, that oh, good intended, point. That wasn't intended for Roxbury. It was no. intended for the district. It's broader district. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think of so, you as one district. Oh, residents of the district. Oh, okay. But if so, that's not clear, let's make it clear. For some reason, I didn't catch that. That that next sentence probably after the paragraph. The seven hundred residents was not about Roxbury. New paragraph, or should we be more explicit about district, or what do you think there? You know, what you could do is you have the first sentence, then you say Roxbury is a town with about 700 residents, and then your next sentence is, starts with Montpelier is a small town with big city amenities, or the capital district has big city amenities, or something like that. So move Roxbury up to after 8,000 people. Mm -hmm. is what yep. You're saying. Yep. yep, yep, contextually that makes sense. Yep. And then Montpelier is a small town with big city amenities. <clears throat> Give us enough time and we'll just, sure. just crunch this. It, it, it's good. It's all right. Um, this is more for us. But yeah, so not lost to anybody. We were the first school in the country to fly the Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. flag. Yes, we were. I personally wear that. as a, I'm proud of what we did. And I think somehow reflecting the fact that this board, this community, is willing to embrace leadership of really – Mm -hmm. stepping ahead and, and you know we want candidates to apply who are ready to do something big and bold and exciting not necessarily in, as far as race relations but anything mm -hmm. so I think there's we could maybe get a theme in there that even by mentioning the Black Lives Matter issue we are telling candidates that we are very open to people who have exceptional ideas and you may want to consider that you know Peter was thinking the, the concluding I, sentence of the very first paragraph the Montpelier Roxbury School District is a newly consolidated school district I feel like that needs to be expanded upon and the theme that you're going with new ideas and new leadership and let's do big and, new things. And, and by even fit. mentioning the Black Lives Matter, that's an example of like we're open to really interesting ideas that help give the kids an educational experience that is exceptional. That's, mm -hmm. what, we're, that's what this is really about, right? We want to hire someone who's going to give kids an exceptional education experience at that price. We, uh, and so then, but somewhere also in here, I wonder given some of the emails we've got from parents if we should say we would we um want applicants who value diversity and i don't know if we can be as bold to say this but just maybe be blunt we are a pretty dominant white community and we need what we're too white yeah mm -hmm. okay we could say that too <laughs> but by saying something about because we're a dominant predominantly white community we really would value applicants who understand the importance of bringing diversity into all aspects of the educational experience. Like, we, you know, so I, I'm not going to fall on my sword over this, but somehow mentioning to an applicant would really understand the need to bring lessons about diversity in. So and maybe I don't know where to put number it. Two we do have says, number two that says sensitivity to mm -hmm. issues of diversity, equity, yeah. inclusion, uh, and cultural competence just about, needs a little yeah. beefing up. I, I, I would say it's related really about not just sensitivity, but yeah. it's kind of committed Demonstrated to leadership. See, that's the thing. Yes. Sensitivity right. means you've mm -hmm. got a problem. There's a problem in the school. Oh, I understand. That's what it means to me. There's Is committed to. That's what yeah, I'm you're, saying. Leadership. Like it's saying leadership is what we want. Sensitivity world. is more reactive is, to me. Yeah. So, and I think we've heard from constituent people about that this is important to them. Yeah, and I was thinking of a line along yours, but maybe expanding on it and say this okay. the, the district has been is committed. Is committed to, but also to say yeah. other things too. I mean we've we've been out front in personalized learning, we've been out front in proficiency based mm -hmm. learning. And we're the first district in the country to fly the Black Lives Matter flag. Maybe throw a sentence like that in so it kind of gives and a little energy to that we're we're on the cutting edge of some things. And really we want a leader who's gonna help us develop those ideas, yeah. which mm -hmm. we didn't always have. Like some of the environmental initiatives we had talked about on the Montpelier board never came to fruition, like moving to non diesel buses. Like we were, you know, we would do that in a second if we could make that happen, and the community would love it. So, anyway, thoughts? That's my thought. So, those are great ideas, and I want to incorporate them. I don't know how we're at this second. Um, would this be a good time for a five minute board work session to just punch this up and mark it up and edit it? Would you want me to sort of take your remarks and try to fold them in here? You've got the language down better than I do around this important stuff to you, so I don't want to compromise in any way what you want. Let's let's take five minutes and put okay because I, I really think even though we talked a lot, I think it's like a sentence or two. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. One page document. Huh? Yeah. Do you? While you're thinking about a sentence, do you think it makes sense to, you know, it says the district has four schools and it lists four schools. 
with the discussion about Montpelier Roxbury, do you think it's worth saying something like the district encompasses the city of Montpelier and town of Roxbury and has four schools? And just to kind of make it obvious that we are talking about two. Sure. It's districts. a hard thing. I, I was thinking as I read this, that's a hard thing to explain. So if you, to me, if you are in Vermont, you'll get it. Mm -hmm. You can Maybe. Google it and you'll get it. Yeah, yeah. If you're out of state, um, it's an anomaly, Vermont is in general, and this is another anomaly. You're going to have to do right. some work to figure that out because you won't get Roxbury in my opinion, right? I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I was trying to figure out how to say that. I'm not sure how you do, but maybe that's a good thought of consider includes the town of Montpelier and the or the city of Montpelier. What are we? And the so town of Montpelier. outside person would be like, well, the city is this and the town is this. My assumption would be the town is part of the city. And Google Maps shows them here and there. Yeah. 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 That's, right. yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So this is five minutes of board right time. Is that where we are? Is that yeah, sure. Okay, so. cool. Thanks. The changes that the board is making is first, removing the high things. Yeah. Secondly, um, in the second paragraph, explaining that the district encompasses the city of Montpelier and the town of Roxbury and has the four schools that are listed. Yeah. After Montpelier High School, they're going to put a hyphen and state that that is the first school in the nation to fly the Black Lives Matter flag. Uh, in that following paragraph, we're going to just strike the local faith and wisdom communities. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then the successful candidate, number two, instead of saying the <coughs> sensitivity to it, uh, they want to change that to committed to advancing the issues of it. That's better. Yep. And then on the back page where you have information about the district can be found here, the, and about Mount Pilly can be found here, um, there will also be information about Roxbury can be found here with the link to the Roxbury website. Thanks, Lisa. Sounds good. Yeah, it sounds great. Right. I'm going to make a copy of this, of this back to you. Okay. Right. Right. You want to wait to see the copy before you approve it? Or I think. No, we're, 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 we're done. done. Yeah. Do I want to make a motion to approve the, uh, what do we call it, this, uh, vacancy announcement? Vacancy announcement. So I'll make a motion to approve the vacancy amount, the vacancy announcement <laughs> as, as modified by the Board of Selectmen. Second. 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 How many folks have had the opportunity to work with the school spring platform? Anyone? So, yeah, you're right. Of course you have. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's really quite an impressive platform, and it was actually developed here in the state by, by a former school superintendent. Right, yeah, I was going to um, say you. And is now the national standard, quite frankly, for, for school vacancies. Uh, it is. Um, it, it, it's absolutely reasonable to work with when you're receiving the information. We're only going to be dealing with complete applications, and on school spring, complete applications means the following submissions. It means resume, it means cover letter, it means um, the uh, uh, opportunity for, for transcript background review, um, as well as uh, up to two essay questions that they will respond to uh, of your choice. So. That's what I'd like to do next is to uh, talk with you about what those questions might look like, what sort of information you want the screening committee to consume. And obviously, once you get the applications of the finalists, you'll also be getting a chance to see the finalists' answers to those questions as well. So, a um, whole bunch of other questions get asked of the candidates. Uh, there'll be 10, 12, 15 questions during the first level of interviews. By the screening committee. There'll be probably the same number or so by you of the candidates when you see them as well. But these will be a chance to have them commit in writing their answers to, to a couple of essay questions. So let me just pass out some examples and just see, uh, see if any of these tickle your fancy, with the exception of the last one, number 18, I guess it is. Um, these are all ones that have been used by other boards. So instead of reinventing the wheel necessarily, we can at least look at what other boards have uh, tossed out there. I'll give you two minutes to read this as well, and then we can <sighs> see how these fit your needs.
Billiards. Let's run the table, shall we? Who, uh, who's a fan of number one? How many number ones do we have out there? Okay. Who likes number two? Okay. Who likes three? All right. Who likes four? Who hates five? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a little no kidding. Little idea, yeah. How about six? I like six. We got one for six. Good. Who likes seven? How about eight? I'm down for eight. One down for eight. Nine? I'm there again. Nine it is. Ten? It's a good out of state question, but I don't like it. All That's right. for here. <laughs> Eleven? Twelve? I like twelve. I, I like 12. twelve too. Yeah. One, one, two, two three. 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 Three it is. Thir uh, thirteen? I yes. said thirteen, but changing the small, crossing off the small, but. Just unique. We, we can edit it, but you still like it, is it? Mm -hmm. So we got three for that? Yep. Okay. 14? 15? Five, you don't get to vote. <laughs> 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 16. Oh, I like 16. I like Me 16. Too. Three and 16. 17? 18? 18. Ooh, almost a home run there. Four? Uh, I say 17, but the way you choose one the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course the fudge. <laughs> well, before if it's at 18, can we just use 18 for sure as one of them? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I, I want to say that I'm thinking about this as a, a general, as I think about general assessment. And since it's a general uh, question, you want it to be open enough that you can see how somebody's gonna answer it. In mm -hmm. other words, open enough so that you find out what they're really thinking. So enough open-ended opportunities to, to learn. Okay. So we're lobbying for one over another, as you said that? Were you pushing for? No, I'm just saying yeah. that as, as I looked at the questions, that's what I wanted. I didn't want any very specific. I might ask those if I was on the steering committee, but yeah, sure. on a, for an essay, I want to leave it open so that you can either wow me or hang yourself. Tell you what, we're going to focus right now on 12, 13, and 16. Okay? 12, 13, 16. Pick the two you like the most. 12, 13, 16. And for 13, we're open to maybe striking everything after challenging. I mean, because it's not really. I would say unique should stay, but small and rural. Maybe change, maybe leave out. And do we, does, does that convey we're challenging? I'm, I think one of the attracts to our job is comparatively we're not challenging. Yeah, I don't, I don't like 13, so I can't speak to it. <laughs> mm. I read that as how do, you, how do you create a, how do you create a um, community of learners that is both educationally inclusive Educational, education, 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 okay, right. That's the way I read it. So the small, unique, rural school, I, I agree, small and rural don't need to be there, but I don't really know if you want to say unique, because then it just makes it sound like it's the district that's challenging. Right, <laughs> that's <laughs> true. Stopping sure. Really exactly. So no commas in there, Grant, just that it's both educationally inclusive and challenging, period. Is that that's, that's the end, yes. Yep. That's, okay, let's make that how 13 reads then. Mm -hmm. You're voting for two of these, okay. 12, 13, and 16. Good to go? Mm -hmm. How many like 12? One, two, three, four. Who likes 13? We voted one. twice. Or you, you, you tell me your two votes, yeah? yeah. Two. Three, four, 13, and 16? So have we settled then on question 12? Yeah. And then the question 18? 12 mm -hmm. is nice and open ended. It's so open ended. Yeah. Yeah. Any edits to those two questions? Um, wait a minute. Okay. Let me think about that. Yep. I was, I was hoping to get a question in that had the word leadership in it. And so I was. Trying to think, could we say? Well, I'm 
wondering if, here's, here's my thought on that. But that's a good question. I'm okay with it. And well, I thought about it, but that's what I'm looking for, and that's maybe I wait and see if answer. that's what I get. That's kind of my thought, too. Okay. I, mean, I think yeah. both okay. these questions invite someone to talk about their leadership. Okay. And yep. if they don't, Agreed. that should tell us something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to embed these two questions into the process. Um, Great. Feel the need to approve those? It's up to you whether you want to formally Let's adopt Let's do it. Just no reason not to. Um, yep. Motion to approve those two questions. And then we approve question 13 and 16. And the, no, thir 13, sorry, 12, 12 and 18. 18. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't even read. 12 and 18 in our advertisement for Second. All second. Uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. 12 and 13 is it? Or 12 and 18 is it? <laughs> <laughs> Two. Okay. We want to find 12, right? So let's have a conversation now about uh, your budget for this mm -hmm. yeah. body of work. Mm -hmm. And budgets for this stuff are just, you know, challenging because every search is different. Um, some searches you've got all inside candidates, some searches you don't, and, and that, that, that affects cost. Some boards like to just, you know, shoot for the moon with all kinds of advertising. Some like to sort of make it a, a bit more narrow and a bit more cost efficient. So what I've captured here are just costs that I think, frankly, is a responsible budget with the exception of, I just don't know, is it Q and R? Q, Q, C, Q. C, Q, Q. strategies. Um, so that would be a cost that would either be separate from this budget or you'd want to fold into this budget, I, I think, is the two ways to approach it. I think it ought to be separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's separate. Okay. The VSBA contract is a fixed cost. Mileage is an estimate. Um, office expenses would be reimbursement to your central office if there was a need to reimburse for these kinds of expenses. Advertising, um, this, this is a big number, and if you don't care to go hog wild with major city newspapers, it won't cost as much. Um, this is a rough back of the envelope estimate of a whole lot of, in my mind, excess advertising. You're gonna want some food probably for the community forum when your citizens come out. And you're gonna wanna pay for your finalist dinners uh, and so forth when they're here that, that final day. Uh, perhaps travel support for finalists, that's, mm -hmm. you know, maybe. Anticipate that. Transition costs, if there's time, ideally, for there to be transition between your outgoing superintendent and incoming superintendent uh, before July 1st. And then some miscellaneous costs for a, uh, to round it up to 13.5. So I, I think it's a responsible number. Frankie, I don't think you're going to spend this much on these expenses. Um, but I think instead of having to come back to you for repeated dips into the bucket, I, I wanted to give you a, a responsible number to work with. So that is my recommendation. A budget of 13.5. And I would also just tag in here that um, this is a superintendent search for the new district, the new merged district. Right. In my mind, this seems like an appropriate use of the merger grant money to mm -hmm. find a superintendent for the new merged district. Yep. So my intention would be to use that grant for these costs and potentially CQ strategies. Yes. So you don't need to make a motion on that. I just wanted to make sure that I was seeing head shakes so it's okay when I use that budget that you're fine with it. That's and very sensible. Good idea. And mm -hmm. I think this budget makes a lot of sense as well. That is probably something you might want to make a motion on. Yeah, I think so. So I move we approve 13.5 expenses for Up the search two. process. Up to, and I'll second that. Yeah. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So let's play the contingency game here, okay? If I'm wrong, okay, if somehow expenses look like they're going to exceed 13.5, um, is it reasonable <coughs> to ask the board to reassemble in order to further approve additional yeah. costs as, sure. as explained? Okay. Thank you. And may I ask you, because I think the advertising number is high, and that's okay to put it in this budget is high, but besides school spring, I'm not sure I agree with you. Um, advertising in papers has not gotten good results in searches I know of. 
Is there any place else you would recommend putting an ad? At, at cost? I, I have a number of places at no cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm saying at But at cost, I, I do not. Okay. I do not. It, it really... I, I agree. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think especially today, I, I think most people go to free or low cost. Website. I, I, right. I, think the I just wondered if you knew something. I just wondered if you knew something. Times ad on yeah. Sunday and finding a job or yesterday's news. Yesterday. Right. Yeah. 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 And and I'm approaching this budget, by the way, with the total budget in mind. I I, I know you're not expecting me to hold to each individual line item, and the first one's fixed for certain. But you know, mileage might be six fifty one for all I know. I mean, it just it yeah. may maybe that. So. Okay. Um, Next, I think, in, in terms of process, will be the formal charge that you want to set for the screening committee. And within that charge, you want to talk about the mission, your expectations of the mission, uh, the nature, na uh, nature of the membership, as well as the process that you want the committee to work through. So uh, let's, uh, let's go there next. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Roma. Silly me. I was just checking to see Grant if you were paying attention. Yeah, you're doing fine. You're, you're holding up over there. Just trying to get my salary as an assistant. <laughs> Thanks for being here tonight. So just to prove that uh, I am flexible, that I am a learner, and that I can adapt, I'm going to lose the hyphen in the, in the header there. I can do yeah. that for you. That's gone, just like that. Out of here. That mistake is going to be something that is going to yeah. always. We'll deal with yeah. <laughs> Never. So, I, I'm not going to insult you, but it might be helpful if I just maybe read with you on this. Yeah, Montpelier sure. Roxbury Board of School Directors charges a superintendent candidate screening committee with the express authority to guide the initial superintendent screening process. The screening process will begin as defined by the board's search process calendar. It will conclude upon its recommending finalist candidates to the board, parenthetically, or concluding that none shall be as part of this screening process. The screening committee shall work with the VSBA consultant to consult uh, to complete the screening process. The screening committee shall strive to present up to three licensed or licensable candidates to the board. Uh, whoops, that let's, let's lose the that meet the search criteria established by the board. Uh, the screening committee shall provide information on the finalist candidate's experience, specific skills, and related background details to the board following. That's redundant too, isn't it? No, it's all right. So the board finds completion of the initial screening process. But you'll not vote on or otherwise rank the finalists. The board retains a final retains authority to hire the new superintendent. So it's meant to give clarity to the members of your screening committee in terms of what their job is, what their job isn't, and, and what the goal of their work is. Keep going. Yep. Yes. yes. It is customary not to have umpteen thousand people on a screening committee because it just doesn't work well with too many people. But it does work better. If you can have a cross section of the organization and, and school community reflected back on, on the committee. So, certainly this is negotiable, but my suggestion to you of dividing up perhaps a 10 member screening committee would be a couple of board members, um, one of whom gets named by you as the chair, one of the two board members gets named by you, the board, as the chair of the screening committee, and the other board member gets named by you as the secretary to the screening committee. So, there's a direct link back to the board for reporting and updates whatever communication you're expecting to hear back from the committee, there's a direct pipeline of communication that way. Two central office administrators, because those are the cats that work most directly, most frequently, most in and out daily with your, your, uh, your superintendent. One building administrator, two teachers, one support staff member, and two individuals from the uh, parent community uh, stakeholder group. So, um, how does 10 feel? Let's start there. It feels viscerally good. I, I, Mike McCraith walked through this, and I th we may want to up it a few for, I think, generally the purposes of inclusion. I think we have at least, for instance, I think we have at least two building administrators. Uh, in fact, I think we've got maybe five building administrators who want to be on the committee, but I think we can narrow it down to two. I think getting it down to one would be hard. Um, in fact, getting it down to two might even be difficult. I, I know. It, I think we can do two. I, I think there are, I think it would be difficult with one. Well, just given the two central office administrators and the building administrator that I Oh, yeah. okay. Who was in central yep. office? No, I was you. bumping those two. <laughs> 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 yep. Who else? Nope, I think that's good. I think Mary, that's good. Okay. Sorry. Mary, right. 
the one that's but, still you know, left is married. Right. That's what I thought. We were. <laughs> that's right. the other it's one is vacant. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, okay. Then. So. Erase that. Um, I think it would be. It would be Grant and Mary. Yeah. Essentially. I guess so. <laughs> And then yeah, principles. we grant Mary and then one at a, a principal. And then a principal. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's that's plenty. And, and to be honest, if there was a struggle that both principals felt so strongly, then Mary and I could maybe. There's four of us, and this is. Yeah. So okay. Or actually five, but. Right. So there's five, and this is giving three seats. So I think as long as three is good, I think you know, we can. You can do that. Okay, sorry, I, I was misreading that. I think we're fine there. I do think we probably want three parents, community members, uh, both for inclusion and also uh, I was thinking one from Roxbury and two from Montpelier. Yeah. Well, I, was I think that's reasonable because I was having a hard time thinking about the small numbers and like where, how Roxbury is going to fit in or a small percentage, yeah. would you want this and that? And yeah, it would make sense, I think, to have free parent community members to allow some presence for sure. May I suggest this? I think three is a fine number, go with it. Um, I don't know that I preclude here um, what that distribution needs to be. I think that when you make the decisions down the road about who these individuals are gonna be, you can figure out those weights and what makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And Mike, one thing that's kind of a unique thing for this group is um, still yet to be determined the collective bargaining units, mm -hmm. but if um, Montpelier obviously is the larger group, Montpelier has three bargaining units, a teacher, an IA specific, mm -hmm. and an AFSCME, which is tech custodians. So <clears throat> I know a lot of times we have one for each one of the bargaining units, a representative for yeah. each one of those. This would have teachers and support staff, which typically support staff is your other contract, your bargaining unit, which includes everybody. But we have a, two support staff in essence. We have instructional assistants and we have AFSCME. So I don't know if it's worth saying one teacher rep, one IA rep, one AFSCME rep, or if I, I'm okay with it like this, but I don't know if that creates any problems. I'm not on a lot of the committees, so I don't know how they've been typically running. One approach could be um, that I suspect each of those three labor groups um, has some sort of leadership structure. It, it might, as the board reaches out to the various constituent groups, the principals, teachers, maybe reach out to the three union leaders and just say, you know, can you cooperate on a recommended representative representing labor? I would say that, that those and two other, I wouldn't want to do less than two teachers. So I would say use that approach to the two other bargaining units and ask them to provide one person. You think that would Well, would, and really, it's work. not actually two bargaining two units. Two supports two bargaining units. Got it, got it, got it. Other, other right. Maybe it would be three because there's a one teachers. Well, I was but debating the issue of two teachers. Uh, and it's just a hard, when you have so few people, it's hard to figure out what to do with Roxbury, right. to be honest. Right. Yep. And I didn't necessarily mean that there would be a, a Roxbury representative. I just meant that there's still those bargaining units involved. Right, right. And Roxbury is one of those, as Washington is part of Washington South, only have two bargaining units. So you could do two teacher reps and one support staff rep to be determined by the leadership of AFSCME slash yeah. MESA. That's what I do. The other, do we want a student on the committee? I thought about that. Um, my, I would say yes. I would say I yes, too, instinct. but it, it does add another person. And you could round it up to 12. Yeah. And I was thinking of setting a limit of 12, and mm -hmm. I think we need a limit. Uh, just, I, think we want to I think we need a limit, yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, we I can, think maybe we can call these numbers guidelines, sort of 12 and absolute. Right. And if, you know, <laughs> you know, if both Mary and Grant decide they don't 
folks don't need to do it, we can add another teacher or if, you know. There might be some people that wear two hats too. Yeah. I, I also think it'll be very important to have established the calendar and publish it. Yes. So if you're gonna be on this committee, you have to be able to show up and that won't be easy on this timeline. So that's a good point. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you know. Could be some self elimination of right. interest I just think based that on that. <clears throat> so are we at twelve? Is that where we find ourselves? Is, yeah. yeah. Are twelve minutes. Twelve. Mm -hmm. Thank so you for not going beyond twelve. I really appreciate that because it, it just gives. Well, even twelve is going to be unwieldy. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. And before we move off that section, uh, as a board, you'll figure out which two members make the most sense to. Crossover onto the screening committee, yeah. and, yeah. and those two folks will be assigned these two roles. And we'll find uh, I'm game. <laughs> I said I'm game. <coughs> Great, thank you for that. Process: uh, screening committee is authorized to work within the committee. Uh, what? Screening committee is authorized to work within the committee. What? <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? To work within the board, or to work uh -huh. within the I'll check that in a second. Oh, yeah. With the advice and direction of the VSBA consultant to receive, prepare, distribute, and review materials using electronic resources and to conduct first round semifinals candidate interviews. Screening committee members shall agree to keep all applicant information confidential. Mm -hmm. The board will be responsible for publicly identifying the finalists it will interview. So that becomes your ball to call when you want to call that ball. And I'll talk to you down the road about that. But um, the big idea here is that this stays uh, where it needs to. and. It, the reason that's important is that this can be premature disclosure of um, folks before they reach a, uh, the final stage can be really career debilitating mm -hmm. yes. Yes. events for folks. So it's just a respectful professional mm -hmm. gesture. Yep. Screening committee chair is the liaison between uh, the screening committee and the board. The screening committee members shall be uh, meeting shall be warned and open to the public. However, the screening committee shall review candidate materials and deliberate an executive session complying with Vermont open meeting law requirements. Screening committee secretary shall keep meeting minutes and send a copy to the board clerk within five days on each screening committee meeting. I will clean up the language on that, but do you think the breadth of this is sufficient to inform the committee and is translatable to them uh, about your interests and how it is that they'll be doing business? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'll be there for one of the sessions. I'll be working hand in hand with the committee chair uh, in terms of facilitating the meetings and keeping things on track, but in terms of the charge, the charge is an important charge because, as we said earlier, this is where a lot of the heavy lifting gets done early on your behalf. And since it's being done on your behalf, you get to decide how it's being done. Becky, how do you feel about it? You've got some HR background here. Does this sort of feel pretty no, close? No, I think this is good. This is a good structure. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. Can I just ask how, with them being warned in open meetings, but yet being, um, everything being confidential, I'm just how does that, yeah, I was wondering, so it's probably the, I guess it's probably like the process we're meeting on this day we're doing is in. There'll be different functions for the different meetings. Uh, for example, the first meeting is, is going to have nothing whatsoever to do with the applicants. First one's going to be getting organized, getting the ground rules down, making sure folks understand how to use school spring, uh, going through confidentiality requirements, uh, understanding state law. Second meeting will be uh, an open meeting in which um, questions, interview questions, get defined and so forth. Um, I imagine a third meeting will start an open session and pretty quickly move into executive session as that will be when we get after the screening of, of the paper people, start to make some evaluations, assessments, decisions about who to interview. Uh, those interviews for the next session would be in executive session. Um, the reference checks is an executive session activity. So. Those are examples of how we would differentiate the activities of the meetings about what falls under the open meeting law requirements for executive session or open session. That's good. How are we doing? Good so far? Good so far. Good. Do me a favor, set that aside for now. I'm going to come back and visit this again in a second, but before you adopt that, let's talk about exactly what Tina was talking about, and that is the, the calendar, because it's, it's all tied into this. And, uh, and now you can pass this one out. <laughs> This is where the rubber hits the road. Um, this is where it gets real. This is where there is not a whole lot of flex. Um, 
my experience is that screening committees feel abused if you work them on Saturdays and Sundays. So we're going to try to avoid Saturdays and Sunday meetings for the screening committee and try to, uh, try to confine it to the work week. But some noteworthy dates um, are some board meetings that we want to avoid those nights because you've got some membership on your boards that are serving on the screening committee. So that would be, as I understand it, May 2nd, May 16th, and June 6th. Those sound familiar? Yes. Those upcoming meeting dates? Yep. Okay. You've got Memorial Day as a holiday on the 28th of May, and you've got your graduation on Friday, June 16th, or 15th, rather. Um, my interest for you, on your behalf, is to get this done before graduation. That's really where my head is on this. So again, it's a matter of reverse engineering, working backwards from that sort of end date, and then rolling things forward. So here's the timeline as I would see it. Um, tomorrow, based on what you've done tonight, and thank you for what you've done tonight, we begin advertising tomorrow. Uh, we get the recruitment activity started, and we work between um, um, Heather and uh, the VSBA office to uh, just hit, uh, hit the ground running with, with materials tomorrow. I would hope that by May 4th, not later than May 4th, you would be able to uh, convene. Uh, it'd be a special meeting, I imagine, un unless you could do it on May 2nd. I mean, that's your call, whether you can work it into your agenda that night or not, and name names to the screening committee. So that means you've got to have some way of doing that, and we want to talk about what that looks like. Uh, you want to have some process by which you're putting the word out that, by the way, we've got this thing called the screening committee. By the way, it's going to meet on these dates. By the way, we'd love to have you consider sitting on it. And by the way, here's how you let us know you're interested in doing just that. So that would be May 4th, uh, operational deadline for you naming the committee. The committee would uh, be named by then, and the first meeting would be on Monday, May 7th. Um, I would imagine, well, I would, I would prefer, and I think a lot of folks might prefer this be a late afternoon meeting, like maybe... What time does school get out? Three o'clock? Three thirty? What yeah. time's your three? Three, three right? That's good. That's three. Mm -hmm. School's here. I think it's three. Mm -hmm. yeah. So travel from Roxbury. We got parents. We got working folks. We got a whole bunch of folks. Maybe start like at four o'clock. Four o'clock meeting. Start. Roxbury ends at two thirty. Two thirty. So maybe even three thirty could work then. Mm -hmm. So late afternoon is what I'm thinking for most screening committee meetings. And that ought to be clear too, Tina, in terms of what folks yep. check their calendars and availability, not just for dates, but for times as well. Uh, Thursday, May 10th, the screening committee meet a second time that week, uh, and that's the uh, meeting at which they develop interview questions and talk about the interview protocols and just get their ducks in a row. Because at the end of that next weekend, May 13th, which is three weekends from now, is when the applications would close. So I'd love to give you four weeks, but Frankly, I can't. We're going to work with three. And that's what we've got to work with, and folks know it. What's most important, I'll bet Becky can back this up, is uh, for working folks out there, they like to file applications on the weekends for the most part. That's when they can get after that's it. That's a lot of work. Yep. It is it's a lot time. of work to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when they can organize their thinking, organize their time. And I like the fact that we can get three weekends in before May 13th. Yep. Um, on the 14th, the day after, is when the screening committee meets the third time. And they're going to be screening the completed applications, starting to make some assessments, determine what semifinalists they want us to meet as not just paper people, but flesh and blood real people. We then get those folks in here the following week for interviews before the screening committee. The screening committee is going to take roughly a week until about May 29th to do its due diligence on reference checks with those folks and make the final decision on the 29th um, who they're going to be forwarding to you then you come out of temporary hibernation on this project and you plug right back in again and it's going to be your time then to deal with the finalists that are remanded to you by the screening committee. What that means is um, you'd want to have a meeting probably the week of the 28th, the holiday week, yep. in which you're doing your final planning around your big night with the finalists. We'll, you and I would, would sit down figure out a schedule, we'll figure out a protocol, we'll figure out how you want the committee forums run, you're going to figure out who's going to play host and hostess to the various finalists as we're showing them the district, and how we're getting dinner reservations made, and all those levels of details will be taken care of that night so that the following week, um, 
we get after your interviews of the finalists. Okay. Not a whole lot of time for a wiggle room here, but we can do it. If you can get it advertised tomorrow, and I think that's a key part of I it. I agree. Yeah. It yep. takes no so time to put it up on the school screen. Exactly. Oh. So we have our de application deadline of May 13th. Is there anything happening in essentially New England school-wise? Are there any VSBA meetings? Are there any superintendent meetings? Is there anything brewing in the education calendar? <coughs> on that weekend? No, just between now and the 13th that we should target to get our um, vacancy announcement to? Yes, and, and the VSA office has that calendar. The VSBA office has that calendar. And uh, yeah. So, it's, so they're not on here right now, but <coughs> right. those special events we will have our announcement at. For example, um, I have um, an academy date with a handful of aspiring superintendents meeting the first week of May. Good. So just a lot. So that's, that's an example. That stuff is one on of the many radar. examples in which we will absolutely have this out there in front of people. Yep. Frankly, they'll have it before then, but. <laughs> so. It's good. It's, it's it's tight. It's tidy. It's real. It's we're we're moving. We're not going to be <laughs> not going to spend a lot of time on, in between. We're going to be moving along pretty quickly here. That's okay. Yep. What would be wicked helpful is if we could at least pinpoint what date during the week of June 4th or June 11th you want to do this. A special board meeting? Interviews. Well, a special board, uh, there, there are two special board meetings. Um, mm -hmm. One is the organizational meeting right. for the big night and the other is the big night. Um, less important to me at this minute is the special board meeting the week of the 28th. But if you're ready to decide both dates, that's great. What's far more important to me is that I'd be ready to communicate with applicants, clear your calendar on this date in case you're a finalist because that's the night you're gonna have your chance. And the sooner I can put that information into folks' hands, the happier everybody is and the more, it, the more smoothly it works. So we have um, school board meetings scheduled for June 6th. Correct. And I assume you've got a regular agenda that night and don't need to double up. And no. I wouldn't recommend double, I'd recommend dedicating your attention just to this for whatever date you set. So Tina, the six is out is what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think I'm out of town the... First half of June? <laughs> no. Uh, well, in the week of the 11th, you want to be making up your mind then. If we have it like as late as the June 13th, that's really to turn that right. Maybe we will have the perfect candidate by then. I don't know. Maybe we will. So, so on that day when all three candidates come, yep. it's a big day, yep. and in the evening we'll do a more of a formal interview. Is yep, one at a time. Uh, yeah. They'll be scheduled for 60 to 75 minutes each. We'll have some time in between each one to sort of process what you just learned and heard and thought and so forth. Then you'll see number two, then you'll see number three, and then you'll be spending some time deliberating about all of that. So the idea is at the end of that night, we've our, or ranked our candidates? Unless you have good reasons not to, yes. Yeah. Unless you need more information, unless you want to vet something, unless you just need more time to sleep on something, then yes, that would be a decision point time. Well, Jim, if you were going to be here the sixth, suppose we did two deadly nights in a row and did the seventh, Thursday the seventh. Um, I think the sixth, I'm, I, I'm actually going the sixth through the eleventh. Oh, good, because I'm going the seventh. Oh. So, fourth, fifth, or any, any day of the eleventh works. I prefer the fourth. I just didn't get it done on the fourth, yeah. honestly. Okay. Just keep just marching it forward. If we have people traveling, it's well. And if they're traveling easier. too, that's a good mm -hmm. point. They're missing one right. long day from work rather than in the middle of the week. Yeah. yeah. So. It's the, and you're gone the six through the eighth. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, maybe the fourth. I can fourth. be available. If I'm might be able to switch my flight from the six to the seven. Yeah, I don't know. So. Um, we, now that's our. Sounds like the fourth. I'm here in the fourth. That works fourth. for me. Yeah. Um, what's also, even though it's early in that window, it's fine. Um, it's actually good uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, it, should you be able to make a decision early on like that, it just gives 
your, 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 your choice, uh, that much more time to figure out transition and separate it from contract and mm -hmm. get into your contract and all those good things. But secondly, the fact that you've declared that date of the 4th, um, you can do some advanced promotion of it even if you don't yet know who those finalists are. You can certainly get the word out that there will be forums at such such location at such such time to meet the candidates and mm -hmm. so forth. So uh, that's really good news. So the fourth, bingo. Let's do it. Very nice. Very nice. I would assume you're going to want the board to meet to go over the logistics early the week of the 28th then as opposed to late the week of the 28th because that's not giving much time in between planning the logistics and it being honest. It's fun to meet the 28th. Well, that's, that's Memorial Day. That's the holiday. Uh -huh. that's the holiday. How about the 30th, which is a Wednesday? Yeah, because the 29th is when the screening committee likely will make their last. Right. So do the 30th. Yeah, and, the 30th. And, mm -hmm. and you don't have to wait for the screening committee. I mean, frankly, you could meet earlier than uh, the week of the 28th. You want to meet the week of the 8th. No, I'm sorry, the week of the uh, 21st is even, is even possible. Because uh, the logistics wouldn't necessarily change. Based right. on the candidates. Well, we're sort of in the Wednesday. Correct, exactly. We're sort of in the Wednesday run. That's why I was, I mean, we have our board meetings on Wednesday. I see. That's why I was thinking maybe the 30th. Well, I'm, I'm gone again. <laughs> oh. What about the 23rd? But I'm, I'm there the whole week of the 21st. The, the 23rd. I'm afraid I'm jammed up 23rd, 24th. I do apologize. Those are nights that I couldn't help you. 22nd? Sure. I could help you that night, yeah. You know, do that? Yeah. That works for me. I was going to. I was going to try to negotiate him to change that meeting on the 21st to the 22nd, if I'm going to do the, of the, the screening of committee, the screening oh. committee meeting, because I'm in a wedding on that weekend. Mm. Um. Is there, uh, this is, the border's on irrational, but I'll go there anyway. Mm. On that meeting you have scheduled Monday for the 21st, is there any chance of doing it Tuesday the 22nd? Or Wednesday the 23rd? No, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, for. Yes, I could 22nd. do the 22nd with you. With uh, that one that you've already got scheduled, the one that you've got scheduled on the 21st, can you do it the 22nd? Is what I'm saying. Yes. But and that potentially we could double up on meetings that day. Yep. And just do the logistic planning and. Do, I mean, the oh. screening committee would meet at 4 and then the board meet at 7. Yes, like yes. So, so let's, let's, let's yeah. just. That's, that's a really important question. Whatever date we pick, whether we stick with the 21st or move to the 22nd, it will depend on how many folks the screening committee chooses to interview about how long that meeting is and what time it needs to start. So if you still want to hold a board meeting or what's going on that night, it's a... Well, we were logistics. thinking oh, right. of scheduling our the logistics, logistics meeting. Logistics meeting, yep, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, let's just pretend that they had five folks to interview, that's going to easily be a five-hour committee meeting. Yeah. So it, it oh, just means so they start earlier true. in the day. That's all right. we that's for that group. Yeah. Day long. So day as, long. you know, yeah. I'm going to want to modify this a little bit for your clarity as you figure out how you want to get the word out about the screening committee opportunities, about not just the days, but the windows of time in which they might likely meet. I think that might be further useful to your right. folks' that's consideration. So let's revisit what we just talked about. Um, definitely June 4th is when you're seeing your finalists. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're taking the week of the 28th off as a board. Yeah. And that activity about the logistics for hosting finals and so forth is going to occur on the evening of the 22nd. Am I correct about that? Yep. That's the target. 7 p.m.? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that so that would mean if the other the screening committee is meeting, it's just starting earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's what mm -hmm. thinking of? Okay. And it won't start any earlier than it has to, but it's going to have to start as early as it needs to. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Thank you for doing that. It's it's. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy I can do it. So May 14th is a meeting, and instead of May 21st, we're definitely saying it's May 22nd. That is correct. Instead of week of June 4th or June 11th, it is June 4th. Yep. 
And the seven o'clock meeting is an organizational meeting of the board. What is that meeting again? Remind me. That's the um, the meeting in advance of when you see the finalists. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're going to get together that night. You are going to um, check in on your school spring savvy skills. Um, you're going to figure out what the detailed schedule looks like for yourselves and for the candidates that day. You're going to figure out who's going to play host and hostess as uh, candidates are for shown June fourth. Mm -hmm. Four, four, four June fourth. Four June fourth. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm just. It's, it's the organization sure. for June fourth. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're on the same page. How are we doing, sports fans? Doing good. We're doing good. This is doable. It's been very helpful. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, this is very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lisa, you're signing heavily over there. Um, I'm just looking at um, your calendar. The list and the define the breadth of the advertisement. We basically decided school spring and some of the other free. Yes. That's checked off. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm seeking strategies, so I have some suggestions. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think there would be not high costs. Mm -hmm. And I think what most people in this public school community are familiar with school spring, and just as, as an indicator, I lived in Massachusetts when I applied for the job that Dr. Dweese hired me for 12 years ago. So I, that, I was definitely out of state. So I think School Spring does reach out. Okay, good. It was a wonderful thing James Fitzpatrick did. Isn't it <laughs> though? Yeah, he, he, he did right by us all and by himself. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not clear when they might be a uh, community meeting. So to see the candidates for the year from the candidates office. Uh, it, it'll June be the, the same June day as the interviews on June 4th? Yeah. yeah. How it tends to look that day, if, if you choose to sort of do it the traditional way, is that uh, we try to have um, the finalists sort of passing the night a bit so that they're not in the same place at the same time. So if somebody's visiting one school, somebody's visiting a different school, they're going to different restaurants or different times, they're staggered obviously for the interviews that night. Um, it's, 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 uh, it's a logistical nightmare, but it's <laughs> Yeah, yeah you're right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, community comes out and, 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 and knows where to, to meet the candidate. It's, it tends to be rather informal. It tends to be a chance to greet, meet, and hear a few words, and ask a few questions, and that sort of thing, to sort of get impressions of, of the folks. And it'd be an opportunity for, for folks who attend the forums to just leave you some, some feedback for you to consider that evening when you do meet the, the finalists yourselves. So they'll, they'll, that, that's how it and oftentimes, what about time? yeah, that's, that's what we got to work on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, often during the day, there's a time that each candidate during the day, their uh, community members could come in and meet with the candidates too. Right. But we just haven't decided the time yet. But yeah, it could happen well. during the day as well as the meeting at night. And you know, if it's three, that's one set of scheduling dynamics. If it's two, it's a different set of scheduling dynamics. Um, so it's it's dependent on what sort of emerges through the process that we will work with. Did you need to go back to the, the charge? charge? Yeah, yeah, I do. Thanks. So the reason I just paused in the charge was for that conversation that we just had around the details of the screening committee's dates and times and efforts and so forth. So I wouldn't mind um, drafting some content for you to share. You'll know your pipelines. You'll know how to reach your administrative group. You'll know how to reach your teacher group. You'll know how to reach your unions. You'll know how to reach your, your families and parents and community and so forth. But what I can do is I can give you the gist of what the screening committee work is all about, when it is the screening committee will be working, what it is they'll be doing, roughly what time of day it is they'll be meeting, so that you can then fold that into your outreach to those groups. Is that, is that reasonable? You know, we talked about the time for all of these, and you said 3.30, and I'm thinking 4 o'clock allows somebody who might work to take just 
a little bit of time yeah, off and come to a meeting. Yeah. So four o'clock, I think, is at I'm least on board. better. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, I was saying to Mike that we, I thought, we had a good process for the merger committee for people that wanted to be on the merger committee. You remember they wrote a letter and um, came to the board. So I think if we open it up and there's some process like that. To write a letter <coughs> or yeah. something. For the community is what For I'm the community, community yeah. folks, yeah. for the more the staff side of things, there's less of that kind of procedure needed. Or Right. Yeah, I, I think we also I think we're going to have to coordinate with the various union mm -hmm. reps and, and the uh, administrative team, and the administrative team, team teachers, and you know, and hopefully CQ will help us with this. I think we want to make sure that it's not just the usual folks that they, mm -hmm. you know, that we get a, get a representative group on. Um, and we are in a tight timeline, so we need to make sure that we're getting somebody who can commit yes. more than just the dates, but who's willing to spend the time and the outside time to get. Right involved and to go with us through this yep. fast, fast process. So with vacation ending um, tomorrow, it's probably logical that you'd be able to sort of ramp up and get this sort of news and invitations out maybe early next week. Yep. And then you're deciding on this win again? Is it the second? Uh. Uh. Either the second, or we'll need a special meeting. But I'm hoping we can squeeze it in on the second. I hope we can do a lot of. Let's just put it on the agenda and do it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think we Make can. Make ourselves do it. Yeah, I, I think I think people would rather stay extra time on the second. Than mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Then and call us. Have a different yeah. meeting. Okay. So if you can pump this out to your different constituents, uh, Monday ish, the 23rd, mm -hmm. that'll give folks a week plus, a few days to get back to you with their letters of intent or interests or however okay. it is you want to. Cast that. I'll just throw out a little little problem, and that is the meeting on the second is due to be in Roxbury. And I don't know whether you're gonna ask community to respond and the board's gonna talk to them or not, but we need to think about that. Okay, we do need to think about that. I mean maybe we switch, maybe we go to Roxbury on the sixteenth or something. How does the Roxbury feel about that? It's going to make a difference I mean, in terms of fine. audience, one way or the other. And so I think right, nobody, in, nobody in Roxbury would feel slighted if we switched the date, because mm -hmm. we would anticipate we'd have more Montpelier folks present on the second. So it probably makes sense. Are you expecting to interview folks, or are you expecting to make decisions based on their paper? Uh, it, it, I, response. I don't know. That's what I was asking. Right. Do they need to show up to the meeting? Do they? Need yeah. To I mean, I guess my sense is we probably want to have most. Well, I, I was going to say we might want to have a lot of the pre-work kind of done, but but the opportunity for people come to come if we do. You know, if we are in a situation where, you know, we've got a bunch of letters and we, we might want to. themselves and kind of expand on why they want to be on the committee. Right, which is what we did for the merger committee. Not yeah. that only, I'd say, very limited. You have two minutes or something. But, yeah. you know, it gives you the opportunity to say something. To and then we would decide in an open meeting? No, in an executive in session. An executive session. Yeah. yeah. We did it fairly efficiently last time. That's the only reason I'm thinking we can do it this time. Don't you think? Yeah, I, especially if we give it some thought beforehand. And, and right, so you need to think, so what is the deadline? if that's right, what's the deadline for getting right. your paperwork in? Who do they you, send it to? Or who where, do they where's send it, go? it to? Where does it go? Yeah. Um, what's expected within that letter? Is it a paragraph? Is it just the name? I mean, what do you right. want from them? I, mean, I think we can even start getting stuff out now. Uh, yeah, just on Front Facebook, one. you know, yeah. some of the, wait. So well, you'll, Mike is you'll right. send us a draft of some I'll give you some content to draw from, and okay. you, can, you can punch it up beyond that as you need to or want to. So if I got that to you by uh, Saturday morning, is that reasonable? Yeah. Okay. 
morning. Saturday morning is 11.59 a.m., is that right? Is that you bet. Okay. Saturday-ish. Saturday <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we can get it out, you know, and maybe ask people to get us something about the 27th. I know that's quick, but I, that'll give us a little time to review it have, you know, before the meeting on the 2nd. Or how about so the 29th? The, yeah. Well, I was going to say, or the 30th, so that you have it on, on you given them the weekend. Okay. Weekend. I guess so, yeah. Well, let's let's say the 29th. Okay. So that yeah. way, by midnight, by midnight yeah. That way, yeah. that gives us Monday to review it. Mm -hmm. So we're not because we say the 30th, oh, right. we'll get I'm some looking. folks in. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I lost track of what week I was in. Right. Can we get posted on Facebook So remind me, we committed to a 12-person screening committee, yeah. but we didn't commit to the distribution. So we'll decide that in the second also, right? I yeah. thought we decided. Well, I think we... I think we roughly we decided, decided it, but, but not. We haven't. We didn't commit to how many community, et cetera. Um, I think Jim's so request was right, three right. community. Three yeah, I think students. we do want three right. community. It was, the yeah. question was about the teachers and the stuff like Right, and do we want any students? Um, yeah. It seemed like 12 was going to cover. Yeah. That I think one student would be that late. Yeah. Yeah. So are we saying the 29th is the deadline for community members to um, respond as well as the student, the teacher representatives, and the support staff representative? That's the deadline for? Well, I'm assuming that the, maybe this is incorrect, so stop me, but I'm assuming that the board's not going to decide on from a whole list of teachers, that that could be an administrative team decision for the teachers and the and we're asking the two support staffs to, to give us somebody. I was thinking it would be the same approach that perhaps it's an email from Jim that Heather can forward to the MEA saying, would you forward two names to serve on this oh, committee? Oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. I just meant we aren't spending time at the board asking meeting with that. Yeah. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. I think the same thing with student council, is it? Um, I, I didn't think about this. Okay. I would ask I'm Mike. Not, I, I think we might want to custom wire the student council. I mean, for instance, we might want someone from the Racial Justice Alliance to be on. I don't know if there's overlap in the student council. So some sort of, I, I would probably working with Mike. Just I was going to say I'd ask Mike to just yeah. do. So yeah. Mike can designate that. There's a different mic than me, right? Mike. Yes. Yeah, mic. Yeah, mic. We have a lot of we mics lot of in mics. this. Cool. It's a great name. <laughs> yeah, so if, if Jim, you could like draft some kind of an email that Heather could send out that would address the teacher rep, the support staff rep. Um, we can talk to Mike McGrath about the student rep. The central office and building administrators can discuss amongst themselves. Yeah, you guys worked that out. And then uh, you'll just decide the board members. So really, the only thing you're going to have to sort through is community yeah. submit from the community. And just to leverage the opportunity, in case there is an article or story coming out at tonight's meeting, um, is there a place that the article can direct people to to learn about this? Where would a central repository of this information be? I hesitantly say that Our the website. course <laughs> could be on the website, but we have a six. A history of problems with that. So what do we want to say? Uh, is it, did I hear Facebook? Did I hear Front Porch Forum? Did I hear other venues that... Uh, Actually, honestly, I should say that. We should be able to get this up on the website. We should be able to get this up on the website. This is a pretty important thing for the district. In a pinch, I've taken some notes on how to post stuff onto the website. So if you're talking about perhaps what... Um, of some version of what Mike sent you on Saturday morning and tweaking it yep. to, to put it onto a document that explains what we're looking for. If mm -hmm. you, once that's a final product, if you send it to me, I can get it posted on the school, on the MPSBT website under Board of School Directors, even though it's not really intuitive for Montpelier Roxbury to look there like that. It's probably okay. the best we can do. So but if you're would, directed would, there. Would Monday be a reasonable time for folks to look for that? Is that what you're saying? It's by, by Monday? Um, I think so. Yeah. Monday? Yeah. As soon as Jim Monday. gives it to me, I can get it posted. Yeah. Uh, we'll be in on the point people to the place where they can learn about it. Thanks.
we can are we also, doing so at we could also at the same time send a notice to the Times Argus. Great. Any action on the charter at this point, or charge at this point? With um, do we need to, do we need to approve it? Just do we need to approve it? Should we approve? It? I think we should. Uh, yeah, Let's I think you should approve schedule charge. That's important enough to do that. Yeah. So uh, with appropriate edits, uh, is this the charge that uh, we're formalizing? Uh, yeah, we need a, a motion. I move we adopt the charge as, pre as um, presented. And edited. As and edited. Yeah. With 12 being the magic number? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Second by Lisa. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And did that include the schedule or do we have to separately approve the schedule? It includes the schedule. It okay. includes the schedule. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to <laughs> And I will amend that schedule as well uh, just for your consumption. Thank you. It's a lot of work, Mike. We appreciate I, I, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm super helpful. Yes. I'm thrilled yes. we're at the point we are right now because it, it matters. And, yeah. and I think you've really done good work tonight, and I appreciate it very much. There's nothing else that I think I need uh, from you at this point. Um, I'll look, I, I will not be a part of your process of selecting membership to the committee, but obviously I'll need to know who you've assigned to the committee. And uh, we'll figure out a way to communicate that. Just so I know who I'm working with when we do sit down with a screening committee for the first time. Um, so for the, uh, I'd like to clarify, for the board members particularly that are not here, Yes. Um, you said that the representatives of the board will be on the screening committee. Will the board see you again? Yes, um, I'll be back with you um, for those last two meetings. Okay. Uh, I'll help you get organized in terms of uh, ramping up for that night and I'll, I'll be with you that night. Yep. I'll be a bit invisible unless you're on the screening committee but trust that I'll be working yes. on your behalf to get her done. Okay. And the board's comfortable naming two of your own to this committee as well? Yes. Okay. Well, okay. draw straws for the okay. bomb failure piece. The long straws. Who gets the long straws? Not the short ones, the long ones. Yeah, I want to. I, I know the only one who has firmly expressed she does not want to be on it is Bridget. There's plenty I of said she did not want yeah. to. I scared her off. <laughs> uh, no, Brid Brid Bridget's been wading through plenty, so okay. she decided that she could bow it on this one. Well, folks, um, this is exciting. Um, we're, we're shooting for the best here. Um, I know you understand that it's, there's no guarantees in what we're about to do, but we're going to give the college try and, and get you that next superintendent. That's the grand plan here. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited about this process, and I appreciate this great work. Uh, I brothers and I say we I don't think we'd be uh, able to do this without this help. So thank you. thank you. You're welcome. See you. Billiards. Let's run the table, shall we? Mm -hmm. Who uh, who's a fan of number one? How many number ones do we have out there? Okay. Who likes number two? Okay. Who likes three? All right. Who likes four? Who hates five? <laughs> yeah, it's a little no kidding. Little How about six? I like six. We got one for six. Good. We like seven. How about eight? I'm down for eight. One down for eight. Nine? I'm there again. Nine it is. Ten? It's a good out of state question, but I don't like it. All That's right. for here. <laughs> Eleven? Twelve? I like twelve. I like twelve, I like 12 too. Yeah. One, one, two, two three. 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 Three it is. Thirteen. Uh, I yes. said thirteen, but changing the small, crossing off the small, but just unique. We we can edit it, but you still like it, is it? Mm -hmm. So we got three for that. Yep. Okay. Fourteen. Fifteen. Like you don't get to vote. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like sixteen. I like Me sixteen. Too. Three and sixteen. Seventeen. 18? 18. Ooh, almost a home run there. Four? Uh, I to say 17, but the way you choose one of the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course the fudge. Well, with four of you at 18, can we just use 18 for sure as one of yeah. them? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, I, I want to say that I'm thinking about this as a, a general, as I think about general assessment. And since it's a general uh, question, you want it to be open enough that you can see how somebody's going to answer it. In mm -hmm. other words, open enough so that you find out what they're really thinking. So enough open-ended opportunities to, to learn. Okay. So we're lobbying for one over another, as you said that? Were you pushing for? No, I'm just saying mm -hmm. that as, as I looked at the questions, that's what I wanted. I didn't want any very specific. I might ask those if I was on the steering committee, but yeah, sure. on a, for an essay, I want to leave it open so that you can either wow me or hang yourself. Tell you what, we're going to focus right now on 12, 13, and 16. Okay? 12, 13, 16. Pick the two you like the most. 12, 13, 16. And for 13, we're open to maybe striking everything after challenging, because I mean, it's not really. I would say unique should stay, but small and rural. Maybe change, maybe leave out. And do we does, does that convey we're challenging? I'm, I think one of the effects of our job is comparatively we're not challenging. Yeah, I don't, I don't like 13, so I can't That's speak to it. Oh. Mm. I read that as how, do you, a how do you create a, how do you create a um, community of learners that is both educationally inclusive yeah, and, and education, education yeah. Yeah. Challenging. Okay, right. That's the way I read it. So the smaller, unique, rural school, I, I agree, small and rural don't need to be there. But I don't even know if you want to say unique. Because then it just makes it sound like it's the district that's challenging. Right, <laughs> that's true. Sure, exactly. exactly. So no commas in there, Grant, just that there's both educationally inclusive and challenging, period. Is that that's, that's the end, yes. Yep. yes. Okay, let's make that how 13 reads then. Mm -hmm. So you're voting for two of these. Okay. 12, 13, and 16. Good to go? Mm -hmm. How many like 12? One, two, three, four. Who likes 13? We're four. voting twice. Or you, you, you tell me your two votes, yeah? yeah. Two. Three, four, 13. And 16? One, two, three. So have we settled then on question 12? Yeah. By and the then question 18. Mm -hmm. 12 is nice and open ended. It's so open ended. Yeah. Yeah. Any edits to those two questions? Um, wait a minute. Okay. Let me think about that. Yep. I was, I was hoping to get a question in that had the word leadership in it. And so I was trying to think <coughs> could we say. Well, I'm wondering if, here's, here's my thought on that. But that's a good question. I'm okay with it. Now well, that I've thought about it, but that's what I'm looking for, and that's maybe I wait and see if answer. that's what I get. That's, that's kind of my thought, too. Okay. I, mean, I think yeah. both okay. these questions invite someone to talk about their leadership. Okay. And yep. if they don't, Agreed. that should tell us something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to embed these two questions into the process. Um, Great. If you don't need to approve those, it's up to you whether you want to formally Let's adopt this. do it. Just no reason not to. Yeah. Um, motion to approve those two questions. And then we approve question 13 and 16 and the, no, 13, 13, sorry, 12, 12 and 18. 18. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't even read 12 and 18 in our advertisement for second. All second. Uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great, 12 and 13 is it? Or 12 and 18 is it? Okay. So let's have a conversation now about uh, your budget for this mm -hmm. body of work. And budgets for this stuff are just, you know, challenging because every search is different. Some searches you've got all inside candidates, some searches you don't, and, and that, that, that affects cost. Some boards like to just, you know, shoot for the moon with all kinds of advertising. Some like to sort of make it a, a 
bit more narrow and a bit more cost efficient. So what I've captured here are just costs that I think, frankly, is a responsible budget with the exception of, I just don't know, is it Q and R? Q, 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 Q. strategies. Um, so that would be a cost that would either be separate from this budget or you'd want to fold into this budget, I, I think, is the two ways to approach it. I think it ought to be separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's separate. Okay. The VSBA contract is a fixed cost. Mileage is an estimate. Um, office expenses would be reimbursement to your central office if there was a need to reimburse for these kinds of expenses. Advertising, um, this, this is a big number, and if you don't care to go hog wild with major city newspapers, it won't cost as much. Um, this is a rough back of the envelope estimate of a whole lot of, in my mind, excess advertising. You're going to want some food probably for the community forum when your citizens come out. You're going to want to pay for your finalist dinners uh, and so forth when they're here that, that final day. Um, perhaps travel support for finalists. That's, mm -hmm. you know, maybe. I anticipate that. Transition costs, if there's time, ideally, for there to be transition between your outgoing superintendent and incoming superintendent uh, before July 1st. And then some miscellaneous costs for a, uh, to round it up to 13.5. So I, I think it's a responsible number. Frankie, I don't think you're going to spend this much on these expenses. Um, but I think instead of having to come back to you for repeated dips into the bucket, I, I wanted to give you a, a responsible number to work with. So that is my recommendation. A budget of 13.5. And I would also just tag in here that um, this is a superintendent search for the new district, the new merged district. Right. In my mind, this seems like an appropriate use of the merger grant money to mm -hmm. find a superintendent for the new merged district. Yep. So my intention would be to use that grant for these costs and potentially seek your strategies. Yes. So you don't need to make a motion on that. I just wanted to make sure that I was seeing head shakes so it's okay when I use that bucket that you're fine with it. That's and very sensible. Good idea. And mm -hmm. I think this budget makes a lot of sense as well. That is probably something you might want to make a motion on. Yeah, I think so. So I move we approve 13.5 expenses for Up the search two. process. Up to, and I'll second that, yeah. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So let's play the contingency game here, okay? If I'm wrong, okay, if somehow expenses look like they're going to exceed 13.5, um, is it reasonable <coughs> to ask the board to reassemble in order to further approve additional yeah. costs as, sure. as explained? Okay. Thank you. And may I ask you, because I think the advertising number is high, and that's okay to put it in this budget is high, but besides school spring, I'm not sure, I agree with you, um, advertising in papers has not gotten good results in searches I know of. Is there any place else you would recommend putting an ad? At, at cost? I, I have a number of places at no cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm saying at But at cost, I, I do not. Okay. I do not, it, it really. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think especially today, I, I think most people go to free or low cost websites. I, I, I think the days of looking through the New York Times like ad on yeah. Sunday and finding a job or yesterday's news. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And and I'm approaching this budget, by the way, with the total budget in mind. That I, I I know you're not expecting me to hold to each individual line item, but the first one's fixed for certain. But you know, mileage might be six fifty one for all I know. I mean, it just it yeah. may may be that. So. Okay. Um, next, I think, in, in terms of process, will be the formal charge that you want to set for the screening committee. And within that charge, you want to talk about the mission, your expectations of the mission, uh, the nurture, na uh, nature of the membership, as well as the process that you want the committee to work through. So uh, let's, uh, let's go there next. Great. Thank you, sir. Take it the wrong way. Oh, look at this. Silly me. It's not the right there. Yes, it is. Thanks. Good call. I was just checking to see, Grant, if you were paying attention. Yeah, you're doing fine. You're, you're holding up over there. Just good. trying to get my salary as an assistant. <laughs>
So just to prove that uh, I am flexible, that I am a learner, and that I can adapt, I'm going to lose the hyphen in the, in the header there. I can do yeah. that for you. That's gone, just like that, out of here. That mistake is going to be something that is going to yeah. always we'll deal yeah. <laughs> So I, I'm not going to insult you, but it might be helpful if I just maybe read with you on this. Yeah, sure. I'm Roxbury Board of School Directors charges a superintendent candidate screening committee with the express authority to guide the initial superintendent screening process. Screening process will begin as defined by the board's search process calendar. It will conclude upon its recommending finalist candidates to the board, parenthetically, or concluding that none shall be as part of this screening process. The screening committee shall work with the VSBA consultant to, consult, uh, to complete the screening process. The screening committee shall strive to present up to three licensed or licensable candidates to the board. Uh, whoops, that, let's, let's lose the, that meet the search criteria established by the board. The screening committee shall provide information on the finalist candidate's experience, specific skills, and related background details to the board following. That's redundant too, isn't it? No, that's right. To the board finds completion of the initial screening process, which shall not vote on or otherwise rank the finalist. The board retains a final retains authority to hire the new superintendent. So it's meant to give clarity to the members of your screening committee in terms of what their job is, what their job isn't, and, and what the goal of their work is. Keep going. Yeah. Yes. It is customary not to have umpteen thousand people on a screening committee because it just doesn't work well with too many people. But it does work better if you can have a cross-section of the organization and, and school community reflected back on, on the committee. So certainly this is negotiable, but my suggestion to you of dividing up perhaps a 10-member screening committee would be a couple of board members, um, one of whom gets named by you as the chair one of the two board members gets named by you, the board, as the chair of the screening committee. And the other board member gets named by you as the secretary to the screening committee. So there's a direct link back to the board for reporting, updates, whatever communication you're expecting to hear back from the committee. There's a direct pipeline of communication that way. Two central office administrators, because those are the cats that work most directly, most frequently, most in and out daily with your, your, uh, your superintendent. One building administrator, two teachers, one support staff member, and two individuals from the uh, parent community. Uh, stakeholder group. So, um, how does 10 feel? Let's start there. It feels viscerally good. Although I, I, Mike McCraith walked through this and I, we may want to up it a few for, I think, generally the purposes of inclusion. I think we have at least, for instance, I think we have at least two building administrators. Uh, in fact, I think we've got maybe five building administrators who want to be on the committee but I think we can narrow it down to two. I think getting it down to one would be hard. Um, in fact, getting it down to two might even be difficult. I, I know it, I think we can do two. I, I think there are, I think it would be difficult with one. Well, Just given the two central office administrators and the building administrator that Oh, yeah. okay. Who was in central yep. office? No, I was you. loving those two. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Who No, nope. I think that's good. I think Mary, that's good. Okay. Sorry. The Mary, one, right. The one that's but, still you know. left is Mary. Right. That's what I thought. We were. <laughs> that's right. the other that's one is yeah. vacant. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, okay. Then so. erase that. Um, I think it would be Grant and Mary. Yeah. Essentially. <laughs> I guess so. And then yeah, it'd be Grant and Mary and then one at a, a principal. And then a uh, yeah, I, I think that's that's plenty. And, and to be honest, if there was a struggle that both principals felt so strongly, then Mary and I could maybe. There's four of us, and this is. Yeah. So okay. Or actually five, but. Right. So there's five, and this is giving three seats. So I think as long as three is good, I think you know, we can. You can argue do amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, I, I was misreading that. I think we're fine there. I do think we probably want three parents, community members, uh, both for inclusion and also uh, I was thinking one from Roxbury and two from Montpelier. Yeah. Well, I, was I think that's reasonable because I was having a hard time thinking about the small numbers and like where, how Roxbury is going to fit in or a small percentage, yeah. would you want this and that and yeah, it would make sense I think to have three parent community members to allow some presence for sure. May I suggest this? I think three is a fine number, go with it. Um, I don't know that I preclude here um, what that distribution needs to be. I think that when you make the decisions down the road about who these individuals are gonna be, you can figure out those weights and what makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. 
And my one thing that's kind of a unique thing for this group is um, still yet to be determined in collective bargaining units, mm -hmm. but if um, Montpelier obviously is the larger group, Montpelier has three bargaining units, a teacher, an IA specific, mm -hmm. and an AFSCME, which is tech custodians. So <clears throat> I know a lot of times we have one for each one of the bargaining units, a representative for yeah. each one of those. This would have teachers and support staff, which typically support staff is your other contract, your bargaining unit, which includes everybody. But we have a, two support staff in essence. We have instructional assistants and we have AFSCME. So I don't know if it's worth saying one teacher rep, one IA rep, one AFSCME rep, or if I, I'm okay with it like this, but I don't know if that creates any problems. I'm not on a lot of the committees, so I don't know how they've been typically running. One approach could be um, that I suspect each of those three uh, labor groups um, has some sort of leadership structure. It, it might, as the board reaches out to the various constituent groups, the principals, teachers, maybe reach out to the three union leaders and just say, you know, can you cooperate on a recommended representative representing labor? I would say that, that those two other, I wouldn't want to do less than two teachers. So I would say use that approach to the two other bargaining units and ask them to provide one person. You think that would? Well, and really, we need not actually two bargaining units. Two supports the bargaining units. Got it, so got it, got it. Other, other right. Maybe it would be three Well, I was but debating the issue of two teachers, uh, and it's just a hard, when you have so few people, it's hard to figure out what to do with Roxbury, right. to be honest. Right. And I didn't necessarily mean that there would be a, a Roxbury representative, I just meant that there's still those bargaining units involved. Right, right. And Roxbury is one of those, as Washington's part of Washington South, only have two so you could do two teacher reps and one support staff rep to be determined by the leadership of AFSCME slash yeah. NESA. That's what I do. The other, do we want a student on the committee? I thought about that. Um, My, I would say yes. I would say I yes too, instinct. but it, it does add another person. I was thinking of setting a limit of 12, and mm -hmm. I think we need a limit. I think we need a limit, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Then we can. Well, maybe, I we think can maybe we can call these numbers guidelines, 12 and absolute. Right. And if, you know, mm -hmm. you know, if both Mary and Grant decide they don't, both don't need to do it, we can one. add another teacher, or if yeah. There might be some people that wear two hats, too. Yeah. I, I also think it'll be very important to have to establish the calendar and publish it. Yes. So if you're going to be on this committee, you have to be able to show up. And that won't be easy on this timeline. So That's a good point. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, you know. Could be some self-elimination of right. interest I just think based that on that. <clears throat> so are we at 12? Is that where we find ourselves? Is yeah. yeah. Like 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. Thank so you for not going beyond 12. I really appreciate that because it, it just gives us Well, even 12 is going to be unwieldy. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. And before we move off that section, uh, as a board, you'll figure out which two members make the most sense to cross over onto the screening committee. Yeah. And, yeah. and those two folks will be assigned these two roles. And we'll find uh, uh -oh. I'm game. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm game. <clears throat> Great. Thank you for that. Process. Uh, screening committee is authorized to work within the committee. Uh, what? Screening committee is authorized to work within the committee. What? <laughs> yeah. What's up with that? To work within the board or to work uh -huh. within the... I'll check that in a second. Oh, yeah. With the advice and direction of the VSBA consultant to receive, prepare, distribute, and review materials using electronic resources and to conduct first round semifinals candidate interviews. 
Training Committee members shall agree to keep all applicant information confidential. Mm -hmm. The board will be responsible for publicly identifying finalists it will interview. So that becomes your ball to call when you want to call that ball. And I'll talk to you down the road about that. But um, the big idea here is that this stays uh, where it needs to. And it, the reason that's important is that this can be premature disclosure of folks before they reach uh, the final stage can be really career debilitating mm -hmm. yes. Yes. events for folks. So it's just a respectful professional mm -hmm. gesture. Yep. Screening committee chair is the liaison between the uh, screening committee and the board. The screening committee members shall be, uh, meeting shall be warned and open to the public. However, the screening committee shall review candidate materials and deliberate an executive session complying with Vermont open meeting law requirements. The screening committee secretary shall keep meeting minutes and send a copy to the board clerk within five days on each screening committee <coughs> meeting. I will clean up the language on that, but do you think the breadth of this is sufficient to inform the committee and is translatable to them uh, about your interests and how it is that they'll be doing business? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'll be there for one of the sessions. I'll be working hand in hand with the committee chair uh, in terms of facilitating the meetings and keeping things on track, but in terms of the charge, the charge is an important charge because as we said earlier, this is where a lot of the heavy lifting gets done early on your behalf. And since it's being done on your behalf, you get to decide how it's being done. Becky, how do you feel about it? You've got some HR background here. Is this sort of feel pretty no, close? No, I think this is good. This is a good structure. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. Can I just ask how, with them being warned in open meetings, but yet being um, everything being confidential, I'm just... How does that, yeah, I was wondering. So it's probably the, I guess it's probably like the process we're meeting on this day we're doing in There'll be different functions for the different meetings. Uh, for example, the first meeting is, is going to have nothing whatsoever to do with the applicants. First one's going to be getting organized, getting the ground rules down, making sure folks understand how to use school spring, uh, going through confidentiality requirements, uh, understanding state law. Um, second meeting will be uh, an open meeting in which um, questions, uh, interview questions, get defined and so forth. I imagine a third meeting will start in open session and pretty quickly move into executive session as that will be when we get after the screening of, of the paper people, start to make some evaluations, assessments, decisions about who to interview. Uh, those interviews for the next session would be in executive session. Um, the reference checks is an executive session activity. So those are examples of how we would differentiate the activities of the meetings about what falls under the open meeting law requirements for executive session or open session. That's okay. good. How are we doing? Good so far? Good so far. Yeah. Do me a favor, set that aside for now. I'm going to come back and visit this again in a second, but before you adopt that, let's talk about exactly what Tina was talking about, and that is the, the calendar, because it's it's all tied into this. And, uh, and now you can pass this one out. <laughs> this is where the rubber hits the road. Um, this is where it gets real. This is where there is not a whole lot of flex. Um, my experience is that screening committees feel abused if you work them on Saturdays and Sundays. So we're going to try to avoid Saturdays and Sunday meetings for the screening committee and try to uh, try to confine it to the work week. But some noteworthy dates um, are some board meetings that we want to avoid those nights because you've got some membership on your boards that are serving on the screening committee. So that would be, as I understand it, May 2nd, May 16th, and June 6th. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Those upcoming meeting dates? Yep. Okay. You got Memorial Day as a holiday on the 28th of May, and you've got your graduation on Friday, June 16th, or 15th rather. Um, my interest for you on your behalf is to get this done before graduation. That's really where my head is on this. So again, it's a matter of reverse engineering, working backwards from that sort of end date, and then rolling things forward. So here's the timeline as I would see it. Um, tomorrow, based on what you've done tonight, and thank you for what you've done tonight, we begin advertising tomorrow. Uh, we get the recruitment activity started, and we work between um, um, Heather and uh, the VSBA office to uh, just hit, uh, hit the ground running with, with materials tomorrow. I would hope that by May 4th, not later than May 4th, you would be able to uh, convene be a special meeting, I imagine, 
unless you could do it on May 2nd. I mean, that's your call, whether you can work it into your agenda that night or not. And name names to the screening committee. So that means you've got to have some way of doing that. And we want to talk about what that looks like. Uh, you want to have some process by which you're putting the word out that, by the way, we've got this thing called the screening committee. By the way, it's going to meet on these dates. By the way, we'd love to have you consider sitting on it. And by the way, here's how you let us know you're interested in doing just that. So that would be May 4th, uh, operational deadline for you naming the committee. The committee would uh, be named by then, and the first meeting would be on Monday, May 7th. Um, I would imagine, well, I would, I would prefer, and I think a lot of folks might prefer this be a late afternoon meeting, like maybe, I don't know, what time school get out? 3 o'clock? 3.30? What time's your? 3. 3, right? That's good. So travel from Roxbury, we got parents, we got working folks, we got a whole bunch of folks, maybe start like at four o'clock. Four o'clock meeting. Start and Roxbury ends at two thirty. Two thirty. Yeah. So maybe even three thirty could work then. So late afternoon is what I'm thinking for most screening committee meetings. Uh, and that ought to be clear too, Tina, in terms of what folks yeah. check their calendars and availability, not just for dates but for times as well. Uh, Thursday, May 10th, the screening committee will meet a second time that week, uh, and that's the uh, meeting at which they develop interview questions and talk about the interview protocols and just get their ducks in a row. Because at the end of that next weekend, May 13th, which is three weekends from now, is when the applications would close. So I'd love to give you four weeks, but frankly I can't. We're going to work with three, and that's what we've got to work with, and folks know it. What's most important, I'll bet Becky can back this up, is uh, for working folks out there, they like to file applications on the weekends for the most part. That's when mm -hmm. they can get after that's it. That's a lot of work. Yeah, it it's a lot time. of work to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when they can organize their thinking, organize their time. And I like the fact that we can get three weekends in before May 13th. Yep. Um, on the 14th, the day after, is when the screening committee meets the third time. And they're going to be screening the completed applications, starting to make some assessments. Determine what semifinalists they want us to meet as not just paper people, but flesh and blood real people. We then get those folks in here the following week for interviews before the screening committee. The screening committee is going to take roughly a week until about May 29th to do its due diligence on reference checks with those folks and make the final decision on the 29th um, who they're going to be forwarding to you. And then you come out of temporary hibernation on this project and you plug right back in again and it's going to be your time then to deal with the finalists that are remanded to you by the screening committee. What that means is um, you'd want to have a meeting probably the week of the 28th, the holiday week, yep. in which you're doing your final planning around your big night with the finalists. We'll, you and I would, would sit down, um, we'll figure out a schedule, we'll figure out protocol, we'll figure out how you want the committee forums run, you're going to figure out who's going to play host and hostess to the various finalists as we're showing them the district, and how we're getting dinner reservations made, and all those levels of details will be taken care of that night so that the following week um, we get after your interviews of the finalists. Okay. Not a whole lot of time for a wiggle room here, but we can do it. If you can get it advertised tomorrow, and I think that's a key part of I it. I agree. Yeah. Yep. It takes no time to put it up on the school screen. Exactly. Oh, so we right. have our de application deadline of May 13th. Is there anything happening in essentially New England school-wise? Are there any VSBA meetings? Are there any superintendent meetings? Is there anything brewing in the education calendar? <coughs> on that weekend? No, just between now and the 13th that we should target to get our um, vacancy announcement too? Yes, and, and the VSA office has that calendar, the VSBA office has that calendar, and uh, yeah. So, it's, so they're not on here right now, but <coughs> right. those special events we will have our announcement at. For example, um, I have um, an academy date with a handful of aspiring superintendents meeting the first week of May. Okay. Good. So just along so that's, that's an example. That stuff is one of on many examples on. in which yeah. we will absolutely have this out there in front of people. Yep. Frankly, they'll have before then, but. <laughs> so. It's good. It's, it's, it's tight, it's tidy, it's real, it's 
we're, we're moving. We're not going to be, <laughs> not going to spend a lot of time on, in between. We're going to be moving along pretty quickly here. That's so yep. good. What would be wicked helpful is if we could at least pinpoint what date during the week of June 4th or June 11th you want to do this. The special board meeting? Interviews. Well, the special board, uh, there, there are two special board meetings. Um, mm -hmm. One is the organizational meeting right. for the big night and the other is the big night. Um, less important to me at this minute is the special board meeting the week of the 28th. But if you're ready to decide both dates, that's great. What's far more important to me is that I'd be ready to communicate with applicants Clear your calendar on this date in case you're a finalist because that's the night you're going to have your chance. And the sooner I can put that information in the folks' hands, the happier everybody is and the more, it, the more smoothly it works. So we have um, school board meetings scheduled for June 6th. Correct. And I assume you've got a regular agenda that night and don't need to double up. And no. I wouldn't recommend double, I'd recommend dedicating your attention just to this for whatever date you set. So Tina, the six is out, is what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think I'm out of town the... First half of June? <laughs> no. Uh, well, in the week of the 11th, you want to be making up your mind then. If we have it like as late as the June 13th, that's really to turn that right. Maybe we will have the perfect candidate by then. I don't know. Maybe we will. So, so on that day, when all three candidates come, yep. it's a big day, Yep. and in the evening we'll do a more of a formal interview. In yep, one at a time. Uh, yeah. They'll be scheduled for 60 to 75 minutes each. We'll have some time in between each one to sort of process what you just learned and heard and thought and so forth. And you'll see number two, and then you'll see number three, and then you'll be spending some time deliberating about all of that. So the idea is at the end of that night, we've picked our, or ranked our candidates. Unless you have good reasons not to, yes. Unless you need more information, unless you want to vet something, unless you just need more time to sleep on something, then yes, that would be a decision point time. Well, Jim, if you were going to be here the sixth, suppose we did two deadly nights in a row and did the seventh, Thursday the seventh. Um, I think the sixth, I'm, I'm actually going the sixth through the eleventh. Oh, good, because I'm going to the seventh. Oh. I can't do the seventh. So, fourth, fifth, or any, any day of the eleventh works. I prefer the fourth. I just didn't get it done on the fourth, yeah. honestly. Okay. Just keep just marching it forward. If we have people traveling, it's well. And if they're traveling easier. too, that's a good point. They're missing one right. long day from work rather than in the middle of the week. Yeah. yeah. So. It's the, and you're gone the sixth through the eighth. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, maybe the fourth. I can be available if I, I'm might be able to switch my flight from the sixth to the seventh. Yeah, I don't know. So, um, we, now that's our. Sounds like the fourth. I'm here in the fourth. That works for me. Yeah. Um, what's also, even though it's early in that window, it's fine. Um, it's actually good uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, it, should you be able to make a decision early on like that, it just gives your your your, your choice uh, that much more time to figure out transition and separate it from contract and mm -hmm. get into your contract and all those good things. But secondly, the fact that you've declared that date of the fourth. Um, you can do some advanced promotion of it, even if you don't yet know who those finalists are. You can certainly get the word out that there will be forums at such such location at such such time to meet the candidates and mm -hmm. so forth. So uh, that's really good news. So the fourth, bingo. Let's do it. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. I would assume you're going to want the board to meet to go over the logistics early in the week of the 28th, then as opposed to late in the week of the 28th, because that's not giving you much time in between planning the logistics and. It's fun to meet the 28th. How about that? Well, that's, that's Monday. Memorial Day. That's a holiday. Uh -huh. that's a holiday. How about the 30th, which is a Wednesday? Yeah, because the 29th is when the screening committees likely will make their last. Right. So do the 30th. Yeah, and, the 30th and, mm -hmm. and you don't have to wait for the screening committee. I mean, frankly, you could meet earlier than uh, the week of the 28th. You want to meet the week of the 8th. No, I'm sorry, the week of the uh, 21st is even, is even possible. Because the logistics wouldn't necessarily change yeah. based right. on the candidates. Well, we're sort of in the Wednesday. Correct, exactly. We're sort of in the Wednesday run. That's why I was, I mean, we have our board meetings on Wednesday. I see. That's why I was thinking maybe the 30th. Well, I'm, I'm gone again. <laughs> oh. What about the 23rd? But I'm, I'm there the whole week of the 21st. The, 
the I'm afraid I'm jammed up 23rd, 24th. I do apologize. Those are nights that I couldn't help you. 22nd? Sure. I could help you that night, yeah. You will do that? Yeah. That works for me. I was going to... Go home and put this on. I was going to try to negotiate him to change that meeting on the 21st to the 22nd if I'm going to do this. Of the, the screening of the committee? Screening oh. committee meeting because I'm in a wedding on that weekend. Mm. Um. Is there, a, this is, the border's on irrational, but I'll go there anyway. Mm. On that meeting you have scheduled Monday for the 21st, is there any chance of doing it Tuesday the 22nd? Or Wednesday the 23rd? No, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, for. Yes, I could 22nd. do the 22nd with you. With uh, that one that you've already got scheduled, the one that you've got scheduled on the 21st, can you do it the 22nd? Is what I'm saying. Yes. But and that potentially we could double up on meetings that day. Yep. And just do the logistic planning and. Do, I mean, the oh. screening committee would meet at 4 and then the board meet at 7. Yes, like yes. So, so let's, let's, let's yeah. just. That's, that's a really important question. Whatever date we pick, whether we stick with the 21st or move to the 22nd, it will depend on how many folks the screening committee chooses to interview about how long that meeting is and what time it needs to start. So if you still want to hold a board meeting or what's going on that night, it's a... Well, we were logistics. thinking oh, right. of scheduling our the logistics, logistics meeting. Logistics meeting, yep, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, let's just pretend that they had five folks to interview, that's going to easily be a five-hour committee meeting. Yeah. So it, it oh, just means so they start earlier in the day. That's all right. we that's for that group. Yeah. Day long. So day as, long. you know, yeah. I'm going to want to modify this a little bit for your clarity as you figure out how you want to get the word out about the screening committee opportunities, <laughs> about not just the days but the windows of time in which they might likely meet. I think that might be further useful to your right. folks' that's consideration. So let's revisit what we just talked about. Um, definitely June 4th is when you're seeing your finalists. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're taking the week of the 28th off as a board. Yeah. And that activity about the logistics for hosting finals and so forth is going to occur on the evening of the 22nd. Am I correct about that? Yep. That's the target. 7 p.m.? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that so that would mean if the other the screening committee is meeting, it's just starting earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we're mm -hmm. thinking of. Okay. And it won't start any earlier than it has to, but it's going to have to start as early as it needs to. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Thank you for doing that. It's it's. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy I can do it. So May 14th is the meeting, and instead of May 21st, we're definitely saying it's May 22nd. That is correct. Instead of week of June 4th or June 11th, it is June 4th. And the 7 o'clock meeting is an organizational meeting of the board. What is that meeting again? Remind me. That's the... Um, The meeting in advance of when you see the finalists? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're going to consider that night. You are going to um, check in on your school spring savvy skills. Um, you're going to figure out what the s detailed schedule looks like for yourselves and for the candidates that day. You're going to figure out who's going to play host and hostess as uh, candidates are for shown June 4th. Mm -hmm. for, 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 for June 4th. For June 4th. For June 4th, yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm just it's it's the organization sure. for June 4th, June 4th is what I think. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We're on the same page. How are we doing, sports fans? Doing good. We're doing good. This is doable. It's been very helpful. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, this is very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lisa, you're signing heavily over there. Um, I'm just looking at um, your calendar. The list and the define the breadth of the advertisement. We basically decided school spring and some of the other free. Yes. That's checked off. Yes. Yeah. Well, Maybe. seeking strategies might have some suggestions. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think there would be not high costs. Mm -hmm. And I think most people in this public school community are familiar with school spring. And just as, as an indicator, I live 
lived in Massachusetts when I applied for the job that Dr. Deweese hired me for 12 years ago. So I, that, I was definitely out of state whenever I went through that. So I think School Spring does a great job. Okay, good. It was wonderful being James Fitzpatrick, did isn't, isn't it? Though, <laughs> yeah, he, he he did right by us all and by himself. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not clear when they might be uh, the community meeting. So to see the candidates for the year from the candidates. It, it, it'll June be 4th. the same day as the interviews on the June fourth. Yeah. Um, how it tends to look that day, if, if you choose to sort of do it the traditional way, is that uh, we try to have um, the finalists sort of pass in the night a bit so that they're not in the same place at the same time. So if somebody's visiting one school, somebody's visiting a different school, they're going to different restaurants or different times, they're staggered obviously for the interviews that night. Um, it's it's it's. Uh, it's a logistical nightmare, but it's <laughs> Yeah, it, you're right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, community comes out and, 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 and knows where to, to meet the candidate. It's, it tends to be rather informal. It tends to be a chance to greet, meet, and hear a few words, and ask a few questions, and that sort of thing, to sort of get impressions of, of the folks. And be an opportunity for, for folks who attend the forums to just leave you some, some feedback for you to consider that evening when you do meet the, the finalists yourselves. So they'll, they'll, that, that's how it is. So and oftentimes, what about time? yeah, that's, that's what we got to work on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, often during the day, there's a time that each candidate during the day, their uh, community members could come in and meet right. with candidates right. too. But we just haven't decided the time yet. But yeah. it could happen well. during the day as well as the meeting at night. And you know, if it's three, <coughs> that's one set of scheduling dynamics. If it's two, it's a different set of scheduling dynamics. Um, so it's it's dependent on what sort of emerges through the process that we will work with. Did you need to go back to the, the charge? charge? Yeah, yeah, I do. Thanks. So the reason I just paused in the charge was for that conversation that we just had around the details of the screening committee's dates and times and efforts and so forth. So I wouldn't mind um, drafting some content for you to share. You'll know your pipelines. You'll know how to reach your administrative group. You'll know how to reach your teacher group. You'll know how to reach your unions. You'll know how to reach your, your families and parents and community and so forth. But what I can do is I can give you the gist of what the screening committee work is all about, when it is the screening committee will be working, what it is they'll be doing, roughly what time of day it is they'll be meeting, so that you can then fold that into your outreach to those groups. Is that, is that reasonable? You know, we talked about the time for all of these, and you said 3.30, and I'm thinking 4 o'clock allows somebody who might work to take just a little bit of time yeah, off and come to a meeting. Yeah. So 4 o'clock, I think, is better. I'm on board. Better. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yep. Um, I was saying to Mike that we, I thought, we had a good process for the merger committee for people that wanted to be on the merger committee, you remember they wrote a letter and um, came to the board. So I think if we open it up and there's some process like that. To write a letter <coughs> or yeah. something. For the community is what For I'm the community, community yeah. folks, yeah. for the more the staff side of things, there's less of that kind of procedure needed or? Right, yeah, I, I, think we also, I think we're gonna have to coordinate with the various union mm -hmm. reps and and the administrative uh, team. And the administrative team. team. Teachers. And, uh, you know, and hopefully CQ will help us with this. I think we want to make sure that it's not just the usual folks that they, mm -hmm. you know, that we get a, get a representative group on. Um, right. And we are in a tight timeline, so we need to make sure that we're getting somebody who can commit yes. more than just the dates, but who's willing to spend the time and the outside time to get right. involved and to go with us through this yep. fast, fast process. So with vacation ending um, tomorrow, it's probably logical that you'd be able to sort of ramp up and get this sort of news and invitations out maybe early next week. Yep. And then you're deciding on this win again? Is it the second? Uh, uh, 
either the second or we'll need a special meeting, but I'm just hoping we can squeeze it in on the second. I hope we Let's can do a lot of Let's just put it on the agenda and do it. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I think we can. Ourselves do it. Yeah, I, I, think, I think people would rather say extra time on the second than. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Then call us. Have different, different yeah. meeting. Okay. So if you can pump this out to your different constituents Monday ish, the 23rd, mm -hmm. that'll give folks a week plus a few days to get back to you with their letters of intent or interests or however okay. it is you want to cast that. I'll just throw out a little, little problem, and that is the meeting on the second is due to be in Roxbury. And I don't know whether you're going to ask community to respond and the board's going to talk to them or not, but we need to think about that. Okay. We do have to think about that. I mean, maybe we switch. Maybe we go to Roxbury on the 16th or something. How does the Roxbury feel about that? I don't think it's going to make a difference I mean, in terms of fine. audience one way or the other. And so I think right, nobody, in, nobody in Roxbury would feel slighted if we switch the date, because mm -hmm. we would anticipate we'd have more Montpelier folks present on the second, so it probably makes sense. Are you expecting to interview folks, or are you expecting to make decisions based on their paper uh, it, I, response? I don't know. That's what I was asking. Right. Do they need to show up to the meeting? Do they? Yeah. I mean, I guess my sense is we probably want to have most. Well, I, I was going to say we might want to have a lot of the pre-work. Done, but but the opportunity for people come, to come if we do, you know, if we are in a situation where, you know, we've got a bunch of letters and we, we might want to just have you know 15 20 minutes with people come up and introduce themselves and kind of expand on why they want to be on the committee. Right, which is what we did for the merger committee. Not yeah. that only I'd say very limited. You have two minutes or something, but yeah. you know. It gives you the opportunity to say something. And then we would decide in an open meeting? Not an executive an session. Executive session. Yeah. yeah. We did it fairly efficiently last time. That's the only reason I'm thinking we can do it this time. Don't you think? Uh, yeah, I th especially if we give it some thought beforehand. And Right, so you need to think. So what is the deadline? So if that's right, what's the deadline for getting right. your paperwork in? Who do they you, send it to? Or who do where, they where's send it, go? it to? Where does it go? Yeah. Um, what's expected within that letter? Is it a paragraph? Right, is it a name? I mean, what do you want from them? I, mean, I think we can even start getting stuff out now. Uh, uh, yeah, just on front Facebook, front. you know, yeah. some of the. So well, you'll, Mike is you'll right. send us a draft of some I'll give you some content to draw from, and okay. you, can, you can punch it up beyond that as you need to or want to. So if I got that to you by uh, Saturday morning, is that reasonable? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Saturday morning means 11.59 a.m., is that right? Is that you bet. Okay. <laughs> Saturday-ish. Saturday <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we can get it out, you know, Maybe ask people to get us something by the 27th. I know that's quick, but I, that'll give us a little time to review it have, you know, before the meeting on the 2nd. Or how about so the 29th? The, yeah. Well, I was going to say, or the 30th, so that you have it on, on you give them the weekend. Okay. The weekend. I guess, yeah. Well, let's, let's say the 29th. Okay. So that yeah. way. By midnight. By midnight. Yeah. yeah. That way that gives us Monday to review it. So we're not, because we say the 30th, oh, right. we'll get I'm some looking, folks in. Right. Yeah. Right. I lost track of what week I was in. Week was in. Thanks. The 30th. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Can just get posted on the district website. So remind me, we committed to a 12 person screening committee. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't commit to the distribution. So we'll decide that in the second also, right? I thought yeah. we decided. Well, I think we. I think we roughly we decided, right. it, but exactly. not. We haven't. We didn't commit to how many community, et cetera. I think Jim's so request was three right. community. Three. Yeah, I think we do want three right. community. It was the yeah. question was about the teachers and that's what. Right. And do we want any students? Um, yeah. It seemed like twelve was going to cover. Yeah. That I think one student would be that many. Yeah. Yeah. So are we saying the 29th is the deadline for community members to um, respond, as well as the student, the teacher representative. 
and the support staff representative has the deadline for? Well, I'm assuming that the, maybe this is incorrect so staff, but I'm assuming that the board's not going to decide on from a whole list of teachers, that that could be an administrative team decision for the teachers and the, and we're asking the two support staffs to, to give us somebody? I was thinking it would be the same approach, that perhaps it's an email from Jim that Heather can forward to the MEA saying, would you forward two names to serve on this oh, committee? Oh, perfect, yeah. yeah. I just meant we aren't spending time at the board asking them with that. Yeah. That's yes. a good idea. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And are you thinking the same thing with student council? Is it? Um, I, I didn't think about this. Okay. I would ask I'm Mike. I, I think we might want to custom wire the student council. I mean, for instance, you know, we might want someone from the Racial Justice Alliance to be on. I don't know if there's overlap in the student council. So some sort of, I, I would probably working with Mike. Just, I was going to say I'd ask Mike. To just yeah. Do. So Mike can designate that. Which are different Mike than me, right? Mike. Yes. Yeah, Mike. Mike. Yeah, Mike. We have a lot of we Mikes lot of Mike. in this. Cool. It's a great name. <laughs> yeah, so if, if Jim, you could like draft some kind of an email that Heather could send out that would address the teacher rep, the support staff rep. Um, we can talk to Mike McCrae about the student rep. The central office and building administrators can discuss amongst themselves. Yeah, you guys work that out. And then uh, you'll just decide the board members. So really, the only thing you're going to have to sort through is who yeah. you submit from the committee. And just to leverage the opportunity, in case there is an article or story coming out at tonight's meeting, um, is there a place that the article can direct people to to learn about this? Where would a central repository of this information be? I hesitantly say that Our the website. course <laughs> could be on the website, but we have a six. A history of problems with that. So what do we want to say? Uh, is it, did I hear Facebook? Did I hear Front Porch Forum? Did I hear other venues that... Uh, Actually, honestly, I should say that. We should be able to get this up on the website. We should be able to get this up on the website. This is a pretty important thing for the district. In a pinch, I've taken some notes on how to post stuff onto the website. So if you're talking about perhaps what... Um, of some version of what Mike sent you on Saturday morning and tweaking it yeah. to, to put it onto a document that explains what we're looking for. If mm -hmm. you, once that's a final product, if you send it to me, I can get it posted on the school, on the MPSBT website under Board of School Directors, even though it's not really intuitive for Montpelier Roxbury to look there. But that is probably okay. the best we can do. So but if you're would, directed would, there. Would Monday be a reasonable time for folks to look for that? Is that what you're saying? It's by, by Monday? Um, I think so. Yeah. Monday? Yeah. As soon as Jim gives it to me, I can get it posted. Yeah. Uh, we'll be in on the point people to the place where they can learn about it. Thanks. We How are we doing? Also, at, we could also at the same time send a notice to the Times Argus. Great. Any action on the charter at this point, or charge at this point? With um, do we need to, do we need to approve it? Just do we need to approve it? Should we approve? It? I think we should. Uh, yeah, Let's I think you should approve schedule charge. That's important enough to do that. Yeah. So uh, with appropriate edits, uh, is this the charge that uh, we're formalizing? Uh, yeah, we need a, a motion. I move we adopt the charge as, pre as um, presented. And edited. As edited. And edited. Yeah. With 12 being the magic number? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Second by Lisa. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And did that include the schedule or do we have to separately approve the schedule? It includes the schedule. It okay. includes the schedule. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to clarify. <laughs> and I will amend that schedule as well uh, just for your consumption. Thank you. It's a lot of work, Mike. We appreciate I, I, yeah, it. I'm, I'm super helpful. Yes. I'm thrilled yes. we're at the point we are right now because it, it matters. And, and yeah. I think you've really done good work tonight, and I appreciate it very much. There's nothing else that I think I need uh, from you at this point. Um, I'll look, 
I, I will not be a part of your process of selecting membership to the committee, but obviously I'll need to know who you've assigned to the committee. And uh, we'll figure out a way to communicate that. Just so I know who I'm working with when we do sit down with the screening committee for the first time. Um, so for the, uh, I'd like to clarify, for the board members particularly that are not here, Yes. Um, you said that the representatives from the board will be on the screening committee. Will the board see you again? Yes, um, I'll be back with you um, for those last two meetings. Okay. Uh, I'll help you get organized in terms of uh, ramping up for that night, and I'll, I'll be with you that night. Yep. I'll be a bit invisible unless you're on the screening committee, but trust that I'll be working yes. on your behalf to get her done. Okay. And the board's comfortable naming two of your own to this committee as well? Yes. Okay. Well, Draw straws for the okay. Bob Fillier piece. The long straws. Who gets the yeah. long straws? Not the short ones, the long ones. Yeah, I want to. I, I know the only one who has firmly expressed she does not want to be on it is Bridget. There's plenty I of said she did not want yeah. to. <laughs> I scared her off. <laughs> uh, no, Brid, Brid, Bridget's been wading through plenty, so okay. she decided that she could bow it on this one. Well, folks, um, this is exciting. Um, we're, we're shooting for the best here. I know you understand that it's, there's no guarantees in what we're about to do, but we're going to give the college try and, and get you that next superintendent. That's the grand plan here. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited about this process, and I appreciate this great work. Uh, I speak for others, and I say we, I don't think we'd be uh, able to do this without this help. So. Thank, you. Thank you. You're welcome. See you.